Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for watching. I just wanted to give you a little prequel of this video. We did have some technical issues going into it um, with the internet connection and the audio quality, uh, as well as at one point my video shuts off completely toward the end, um, but we're able to save the video on Rick's end. Um, it is something we're working on and in the future they're going to get a lot better. I appreciate you taking this journey with us. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Have a good one. Thanks. All right. So I'm here with uh, the elusive one and only Rick Crawford. Um, I'm probably going to get messages about how the hell did you nail this guy down long enough to be on a fucking podcast? <laughs> no, you're going to get like messages on the broad broadcast says, hey, man, you'll get like, hey, since you got Rick Crawford, hey, can you? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, if it was live, I would definitely be getting those. Um, yeah. A hundred percent. I'd be getting. Hey, while uh... you're here. <laughs> <laughs> while you're here, ask him about my tune. Um, I've been trying to reach him. I've been trying to reach you with your, your extended warranty. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, bro. I'm telling you, dude. It's uh, just just by knowing you, I get the messages I get like, hey, man, uh, next time you talk to Rick, I'm like, listen, bro, I'm not a secretary. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm certainly not taking notes down. I'm not too fairy. No. <laughs> so, so um all right so let's get uh let's get rolling um so how how did you how did you get your start like how how did this all happen for you uh man so i guess it it was by necessity you know i grew up in a you know my dad decided to give away his life and any life he wanted to have and he decided to send us through private school so I grew up driving those $500 used beaters or $1,000 cars and, you know, working as soon as I could, my parents could kick me out of the house. So, you know, um, so anything we wanted to do, you, you had to do yourself. You you fixed your own bike, you bought your own bike, you bought your own clothes. Um, so you, just growing up that way, uh, you tend to learn to do everything yourself, you know. So when I started, uh, you know, my dad had a a 65 Le Mans that he made look like a GTO. And I absolutely loved that car. But, you know, I was a kid. I didn't know any better. He said, son, that thing is 99% Bondo. It just looks great to you because you're a kid and you just don't know any better. I was like, dude, this is the greatest car in the world. I, I got to have this car. And, and of course, he uh, he sold it on me. And uh, man, that was like, that was a huge upset for me. But I, for some reason, I just had a fixation for like hot rods and stuff. So growing up, man, I, we had, we grew up like in, in a rural area. So there was like a little gas station convenience store and that was it. And I like every month I just waited for, you know, I didn't have anything else to do. I waited for magazines to come out and I would read, you know, the fast forwards of five Oh hot rod, hot rodding. And that's all I did was read all the magazines in there. I got kicked out of there. Like probably more, <laughs> more than often than not than anybody else. I was told it wasn't a library. So I, I just had an affixation for car stuff, you know, they used to tell me that too, but it was uh, it was with nudie magazines. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, moving forward, you know, you know how it is. Before I had a license, I had RC cars, and then once I got my license, uh, my first car I bought in a box. Uh, some guy was doing a restoration project, had a '70 Buick, and the motor was torn apart in the base, but it was all new. So I bought that, and I my first car I put together. You know, um, so I started out I started out building my first car. And uh, it was a 45 Buick. Um, and of course, I got stuck messing with Buick stuff. And with messing with anything Buick, uh, they don't make anything good for them. You have to modify, you know, put girdles, fill them with concrete, put epoxy on them, uh, machine other parts to put them in your motor. And, you know, try to pretend it's still a Buick after you have Chevy rods in it, and Chevy pistons or something you made work. Um, try and keep the crank in it. Uh, man, it was... It was a disaster. Uh, it was a money pit is what it was. Uh, but it's it's a learning curve. You know, you learn you yeah. learn how to just look outside the box or be outside the box and just make stuff work. Um, uh, from my Buick days, I, I worked my way into a shop. You know, I had a hot rod. And, you know, if you have a hot rod, you, you live broke. Um, <laughs> you it's like a boat. Right? It's, it's like fast boat. enough to stay on top of a car, <laughs> especially <laughs> if you got a wife and kids or anything, you know. There's a birthday coming up, and I was like, "Man, I need another set of tires." I was like, "Man, maybe yeah. I can find something on sale." Yeah, does, know, does, does, little, does, yeah, does little Does little Rick need a set of tires for his birthday? Right. Like, yeah. You know, my Christmas was like, "Hey, I just need money. I'll give you a list of car parts that I haven't been able to afford yet." Uh, <laughs> so I worked at a shop. You know, I 
racing around the street, ran into a guy that had a shop, you know, him and another guy. And he's like, hey, man, you look like you work on cars. I mean, if you put this together, I mean, I'm sure you can figure out what we do at the shop. We do the same thing. And I was like, okay. So I worked part time at this place called Allotech for like 12 years on and off. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I, I didn't, I took anything they threw at me. And, you know, whether it was timing belts or engine builds or a supercharger on a G35 or, a, you know, we worked on a ton of Mustangs. So I did gear installs, you know, I pulled part transmissions and, you know, yeah. it was, you know, you learn a lot, you know. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of crappy work a lot of times, and, you know, but in the end, you know, what you work through, you, you build on, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so uh, I want to say after that stay and I eventually uh, got out of the Buick stuff because it was just a dead end, you know, no one was coming to me for, on the side saying, Hey man, I see you know how to work on a Buick. You want to work on mine? It's like, no, I didn't want to work on mine. <laughs> Throw that thing away. I got this so, really nice Skylark I want to make fast. <laughs> yeah. You know, there, there's just, you know, there's, you're just not going to pick up, you know, much. And when you do car, you know, Doing hot rod stuff, it was kind of like part of my thing. You know, you kind of have something you build off of and you try to get other work from it to make money yeah. so you can keep putting money into your money pit. <laughs> and uh, I ended up, uh, you know, one day my sister called me and she wanted me to go to the dealership and they had a Pontiac G8 there. And, you know, I'd been through the GTO era and it never really, you know, not the dog, the other Holdens, but the GTO has never caught my eye, you know. Um, but I saw the G8 and I was like, man. You know, it is a four door. I was always a two door guy, but I was like, that is a good looking car, man. And uh, once I started looking, I just didn't stop. And then I went home for Christmas in 2008 and I bought one off the lot. It was a burgundy one. I still, it's the one I still have now. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was, I, I, that was back in 2008. So you, you got it original. Yeah. Yeah. I bought mine. It, it was, I think it had like, by the time it had been test driven, uh, as many times as it's been through the year, I had, I bought it with like 70 miles on it. Oh wow! Okay, all right. So, so what? What would you say was like your first fast car? Right? I mean, obviously your car the they don't compare to the Buick. The Buick, I went. Uh, man, <laughs> again, what I mean it was a money pit. I mean, it was self induced. I mean, I had, I had put a cage. I built my own cage for it. I built my motor, but it was a four fifty five. I had like I, I had to fill the motor up with concrete. It's called hard block. It's like epoxy to keep it together. And, uh, I was spraying it with like 500 horse of nitrous. So that was, you know, that it, it started out as like, you know, a basic car, but it, it went way out of control. Yeah. I got, in fact, uh, I think somewhere in my like Facebook pages, I got a picture where I stood up on the bumper. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Yeah. And then I, it slammed down, ripped the pan up and tore the steering box out of it and more money. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I mean, it was a really cool car, but it was just, Man, I just there just wasn't enough support. Not enough people could do what I needed done, and I didn't have enough tools and equipment. And I just, yeah. I, 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 you get so much bad stuff go wrong. You just, you just throw in the towel. And that's that's what I did. And I just yeah. switched lanes. I sold the Buick. I had already bought the G8, but it was like my driver. Um, and once I got a little more interest and taste for the LS stuff, I was like, yeah, bye, <laughs> see you, Buick. Yeah. You know, well, I, yeah, Emma, and, uh, and you had already started, I guess, a little bit, right? Because you said you had all Chevy parts in the Buick anyway, so you were kind of <laughs> unfortunately kinda working your way toward it. They were, they, they weren't anything, you know. I still have like my intake manifold and like a few couple small like things that I'll go through my attic and be like, man, why am I so holding? In fact, there's stuff that's in my attic, but because I put drywall on the ceiling, it's like trapped up there. It, it's like <laughs> encaved in my garage. Like I don't know how. There's a rear end up in the ceiling. I don't know how it's going to get down. I'm going to have to pull the drywall down, but it's never coming down. <laughs> the next owner is going to go up there like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And someone's going to be like, oh my gosh, I found like the Buick stronghold. And, you know, like, <laughs> really Buick parts. Like there's trim and there's moldings and there's a stup bunch of stupid stuff that I just like, it's not just worth my time. I don't care. <laughs> I it's, out of my, it's out of my way. <laughs> but, you know, I had, I had been, you know, I, in, when I did the racing with my Buick, I was, when I worked at the shop, I mean, there was a lot of nitrous and nitrous guys and race stuff. Uh, the, the shop guy that I worked with, he had a Yates motor that, you know, we were spraying 1200 to it and we were always going to track and racing it in Rockingham and Fayetteville and Dun Benson. Uh, then he got a blown pro mod, uh, on alcohol. And then I, 
you know, I was always doing like crew chief pit crew work. So I was always checking the plugs, right. you know, making setting changes and working on, you know, mechanical fuel injection and, you know, messing with MSD boxes, doing these, you know, fuel curves. And when we had carburetors, I was always messing with the metering blocks. You know, I never left anything alone. I was always into everything. I wanted to know how everything worked. Growing up, it was the same problem. I'd buy like a little electric car and it'd be brand new. And three days later, it's like completely ripped apart in my room. They're like, what did you do? And I was like, well, I want to see how it worked. I ripped it all apart. I'll put it all back together. It'll be fine. <laughs> sure. Extra parts. Oh, like that, you know, it, it paid off because, you know, later on down the road, you're like, well, how do you know how it goes together? I was like, man, if you saw the stuff I tore apart in my days, you just learn how stuff goes back together. You have to. Just, when you rip apart something that doesn't come with instructions, you better figure it out. Yeah, so, you know, I've had, you know, even when I worked at the shop, you know, anytime you work at a small shop, there's always guys, you know, these losers that come and go as they tear apart cars. And you'll get a car that's completely ripped apart. All the parts are piled up against the wall. And they're like, hey, man, uh, we had to fire Jimmy. Uh, we're going to need you to put that back together and get it back running. I'm like, oh, great. Sure. I'm sure he left notes of where he put everything he tore apart. His motor ripped apart. Everything out of the hood is just gone. And it's just piled against the wrong. There's just a bucket of bolts. I'm like, I don't even know if they're all there already took it apart to begin with. Yeah, seriously. Oh, shit. So, so oh, why, yeah. uh, I, so you said, you said, you know, uh, with the G8, obviously the first thing you noticed it was a big car, right? I mean, like, what made you go with the bigger cars? I mean, because I know you also have the V and the V, even though it's a coupe, it's not a small car. Um, you know. well, it's it just the only thing that had like, uh, an L, a good LS engine, you know, LS, you know, I'd heard about LS stuff. Uh, the G8 was, uh, I would say it's a typical size car. You know, it wasn't like a big, wasn't like a station wagon. Um, no, right, and in right. 2008, man, what was all out in 2008 that, you know, I didn't want a trailblazer. That thing was even heavier and bigger. Oh yeah. Um, and they're riddled with problems. Your, anyway. your vets were a little, you know, you tried when you, when you're, at the younger stage where you're probably not financially savvy enough, you're trying to sell off. I'm going to buy this four door car. Cause it'll be a family car <laughs> and I can mess with it. Right. You know, I couldn't buy, I couldn't get pulled off by a Corvette. It's like, where are we putting the kids? Oh, uh, yeah. well, it's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, it, yeah, it works. yeah, no, I was clear. I, mean, clear. Was, I learned a lot, you know, when I bought the thing, I was like, man, this thing's got like a, it had the newer rectangle port head. You know, I kind of did a little research. I was like, holy cow, this is actually a badass little motor in here. Um, and I, I decided to just dive into the LS word. And when I was at the shop, this was kind of the end of my shop area. Um, we were, we had, when I was, I went overseas for like three years. Uh, before I left, they, they were a performance shop. They did a bunch of five liters and all this work. And I went away for three years. Um I don't know. I guess I did all the hot rod work. I don't know. But when I came back, they had moved the shop and they weren't doing any hot rod work. I was like, man, dude, we had like, we used to have like five or 10 five liters in the parking lot. We were doing gears, heads, cams, whatever, nitrous, turbos, superchargers. Yeah, now, now they're doing oil changes. <laughs> now, now, now you're doing oil changes? What happened? And, uh, I don't know. So um, uh, we still did. We started doing a little more hot rod work there. And I, I guess there's just not a lot of savvy people out there, you know. Because yeah. working at a shop, you you start to realize there's a lot of people that was like, if they didn't pull the, pull the bolt out of that hole and put it right big in that hole, they didn't know where it went. Like if it needed a longer bolt, they'd be like, well, what do I do? Yeah. You know what I mean? They just draw a blank. They're like, I don't, well, just do this, this, and this. It, you know, to me, it was like common sense, but a lot of people would look and they'd be like, oh, well, I, I had no idea. <laughs> you know. So... What what would you say, like, at what point did you start realizing that you just had to make your own parts, right? Like, the, the, at what point did you hit the wall and say, you know what, the cam options that are out aren't fast enough. The porting the porting that people are doing isn't isn't good enough, right? Uh, the brakes that, pe- that are available don't fit my needs, and I'm just going to do it myself. Well, I, I, I do – I always do a lot of research. You know, I right. – you know, <laughs> it always slows me down, but I'm always – I always want to know how it works, why it works. And, and when I got the G8, um, I did bolt on stuff. And I, I think the first thing I did was, you know, of course, I built my, I built my own first exhaust. I went and I was working at the shop still, right? It, you know, this is a transition time and okay. we had done a bunch of diesel exhausts. So I had a bunch of like three inch exhaust pieces and 
a bunch of old, like two and a half inch exhaust we've taken off cars and they're just piled up and they're just going to scrap it. So I had taken it all home and literally I took a bunch of exhausts and I cut them all up and I made my first, my first exhaust because, you know, diesel stuff, a lot of them were four inch, you know, yeah. all these diesel. And it depended if you had a long bed, you had these long sections. So I took some two and a half, I merged it into a single four inch. I bought one muffler and the rest was all hand me down stuff I cobbled together. So anyways, but going back to your question, um, I, I started out with bolt-ons and then I just watched, you know, watch people do stuff. And a lot of people that were doing stuff were, were old LS1, LS2 guys. And they were right. just trying to take, well, if this was really good on an LS2, we're going to try it in this LS3 type rectangle motor. And they just, just weren't running good. I was like, right. man, that, I don't know. You guys keep going bigger and doing stuff. And I just watched what was like, there were certain guys that were kind of fast. And then there were other guys that seemed like they did twice the amount of work. And I was like, and they were a little slower. And I was like, I don't know. Somebody's missing it. So once I seen, you know, like what I thought was like a target area. And I was right. like, well, this guy used this part or this cam. And this guy used this person's converter. And then this guy did this. I was like, okay, I'm going to start with that. And then, um, you know, I build a car. And right. then every time I build something... Um, I was porting my own cylinder heads and then I bought my own, my own flow bench, um, you know, and kind of would do work and see like, hot, oh, it looks like a little better. You know, I do a set of heads and then I do a better set of heads and mm -hmm. I kept building off of what I knew, you know, I built an NA car and then go to the track and I was like, man, you know, and when we were running these cars, you know, like high 11 was fast, you know what I mean? You yeah, were, of course, yeah. you know, and it didn't take long to, you know. I was, it seemed like I was always started being the fastest guy at each version of the mod. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, well, once you start being the fastest guy, who do you ask? You know? Yeah. Everyone's uh, asking you now. Started, and when I started doing it, um, I did it using the DOD VBT stuff. You know, when I first set of cams were all DOD VBT, mm -hmm. uh, or I, they weren't VBT, but they were DOD. Cams. Right. right. Um, they work with the DOD lifters. And, uh, so I had a DOD cam in there that I was racing. I think I went 11 and 11 sixties with it or fifties. And uh, that's pretty impressive. Even with a, you know, with, the the time it was, I was, I was yeah. almost as fast as, as anybody. And I was running, you know, like a DOD, you know, savvy cam, like it would still go into DOD mode. I didn't even turn it off because <laughs> yeah. I was trying to see. How good, you know, could I get good gas mileage? The problem was is HP tuners didn't have enough tables so I could actually leave it on. As soon as I gave it a little gas, it would kick off. And right. It eventually got annoying where I turned it off, but I it, I kept it on for a long time and I tried to tune around it. Um, and, and again, I used my car as a guinea pig for all kinds of stuff. You know, yeah. I picked it for cylinder heads. I did exhaust on it, you know, and then what I thought worked, you know, eventually, you know, I, I live right by the drag strip and, you know. Yeah. You've been to my place enough times, and all the other guys that hasn't changed. I, I could I could drive I, to your place with my no, I don't even need GPS at this point. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I go. I used to go to drag strip do it all the time. You know, when it was bolt on and stuff. I've been down that track so many times. Half the rubber's probably mine. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so, but I did. I throw all my learning was. You know, what I mean, with that, whether it was HP tuners and because I was at the track, I attracted a lot of drag racers. You know, some guy no. would show up at the track with some. You know. RPM or mayhem built car, and they're like, man, your car runs really good. Um, you work on these cars? I was like, I sure can. <laughs> well, as a matter so of fact, <laughs> I started doing one guy's car, and then one guy's turn, guy turned to two, and two turned into four. You know, I met, uh, you know, I met Dustin Taylor, uh, I met, you know, and people like Chris, uh, Chris Corte, he was, you know, he's still racing his G8, but, you know, a lot of guys, you know, like it is when you start being the fastest guy, people start dialing in on you and they're like, Hey man, of you seem to know what's going on. And then I work with them and I think I, I was the first guy to get a car into the tens NA. Um and then, you know, most of the cars on the NA list that were in the tens were almost all mine. You know, there was a few few couple stragglers, but I mean I pretty much dominated the NA stuff there for a while. Yeah. Uh, for NA. Uh I'm the first, well me and Chris are the only ones in the nines on motor right now. So, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't think I've. I mean, I haven't looked at the list in quite a while, but I don't. I don't think I've. 
but I, I still do it. I mean, I still got guys that are doing NA stuff and they're saying, Hey, you know, you got anything new? I was like, well, I don't ever leave anything alone. You know, I, I still mess with NA guys. I work on <laughs> making stuff a little better or trying stuff a little different. And, you know, it, I mean, slowly but surely, I mean, I had this, the G860 record and, you know, now I feel other guys that are faster, you know, yeah. um, that's been 1035 now with the 60 and he's got a special set of heads uh, and some other stuff. And we're going to try to get him closer to the nines on the 60, you know, see if we can get one in the nines with the 60 in it. Stock five. Yeah. It's going to be pretty sick. But it just, it's just one of those things, you know, guys think, you know, you you know, you come up with one thing and you just, that's it. I don't mess with it. That's, that's what it is. And that's, that's not the case, you know? Yeah. And, and um, it's funny yeah. you say that because I, you know, um, I have a lot of guys that I talk to, you know, cause I sell your cams and, and they'll ask, you know, uh, why Rick cam? Why, why wouldn't I, you know, why wouldn't you recommend doing a custom grind or my guy says he'll do a custom grind. And, and I tell people like, look, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I tell people, you know, this cam that you buy, this Rick Crawford cam, this isn't the first iteration of this cam. You know, this like he he probably came up with a with a, a, a grind and ran it, wasn't happy, tore it out of his car and revised it thirteen times before he settled on the little Lunati, right, or the Boostmaster, yeah. or so. And I try to tell people, you know, what you're getting when you buy a Rick cam is a tried and true custom grind cam it is the closest thing you are going to get to a custom grind without co- talking to rick or somebody as smart as rick and saying hey this is my mods make me a cam you know yeah. um and and, and that's why you see not to cut you off but that's why you see people who have these custom grind cams or you know these big monster cams and they go against the rick crawford car with you know a, arguably a smaller cam and they're seeing taillights the whole way, you know, and uh, a, a lot of guys, not to boost your head up, but a lot of guys, you know, I mean, you see it all the time. Like, you know, uh, there's always that that question, like, you know, why are Rick's car so fast? And, you know, or, or people say, oh, Rick's cars aren't that great. And you're like, yeah, well, show me one with with similar mods. That you know, always chase me down at the track and we're always running that mine shaft downhill, that downhill <laughs> mine shaft track, right? <laughs> That's what I tell people all the time. Like you gotta go, to, you gotta go to his down, you know, his downhill track. It's at, it's at a fifteen degree downward slant. Um, hey, you know, and, and you know, as the years go on, um, the timeline gets longer. I was like, listen, uh, this car, this car didn't come out yesterday. This car's been out since '08, and yeah. you know, when when someone dominates the platform more than me, then then they can they can tell everybody what to do. So, yeah. And, and there's been, you know, there's been times like, hey man, I got a guy that needs a cam right now, and I was like, dude, I'm. And, you know, we've run into problems with buying, getting parts, and it, it hasn't gotten easier. No. And, no. you know, I've, I've tried to look around. I was like, man, dude, I've looked at all your, like, available vendors. And I was like, man, I can't find you. I can't find you anything close to what I sell. And it's weird because, you know, this is, you know, the LS world isn't small. I mean, you got Texas Speed. You got all these tick performers. You got all these big shops. You got Brian Tooley. You got all these things. You would think that there's a lot of, like, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, everybody copy and paste and stuff. And it's, you know, it's funny that in with the cams I have, you can't find them. It's not like, oh, well, just buy this cam from so-and-so. I was like, no, he doesn't have one. Oh, hey, no, they're just, there isn't anything like it. They're no. very unique yeah. and they have worked well. So I was like, I, yeah, you know, and, and that's, and that's what's, that's, what's great about them. You know, and, and for me as as uh, a retailer for them and you know thank you again for even giving me that opportunity but um me as a retailer for them you know it it gives me a lot of confidence you know to recommend the cam when someone says you know you know i'm looking for a cam kit i'm able to to say to them like okay well what are your goals what are you looking for and i i have the confidence to know that when i recommend one of your cams they're getting a, a cam that was r and d to shit you know, and, you know, saying this thing and, and, you know, when they get it, it's going to perform exactly like it's supposed to and exactly like they're expecting, you know? Um, and that, you know, as a retailer, that, that is a, that's a huge plus for me, right? Because so many times, you know, people buy stuff off recommendation from other people and they're stuck 
you know, holding the bag when it's all said and done. And if they're not happy, they're like, they got to point the finger at someone, you know, and yeah. typically it ends up being, you know, the, the, the person they bought it from, whether it was under my recommendation or not, you know, um, so it, it's, it's good to know that when I, when I sell a Rick Crawford, customers going to get it and they're going to be happy with it. Well, I mean, I would challenge, I was like, there's, I don't know of anybody that's, it's really hard to find someone that does what I've done. Right. Um, as far as when you do parts, like, like I built my own transmission. I, I did all my RD and all the converters. You know, I went through all the vendors. I, I didn't just go like, oh, Circle D, it's just, I don't know, it's just what I use. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've used Yank. I've used Circle D. I've used uh, Coan. I've used people that didn't even use. I used PTC. They didn't even make converters. I tried using them. And, you know, I use, oh, man. Vigilante, uh, gosh, there was a couple other ones, but um, yeah, I, I, I've used all of them. Yeah. You know, and I've tried, and I'm not just talking just like one iteration. And it's one thing or another, and I end up full circle back at uh, Circle D, and uh, they were the ones that were really open and willing to work with me. You know, some places were like, "Well, this is just what I made. This is just what you're going to use." And I was like, "Well, this isn't working." Well, I was like, "Oh, it. too bad." You know, <laughs> Circle D, and I, you start talking with them and. You start, you know, getting on the think tank. I was like, well, what about machining something? If, if, if that's as far as you can go, can we, can we do some tweaking, you know, bend some yeah. fins and machine some stuff off and try to get something a little better? And they're like, well, we could try if that's what you want. You know, why don't we just use this? I was like, I've used that. I don't like that. <laughs> I already know what that does. I, I, I wasn't happy with it. I want to use this. Indulge, like, okay. indulge me. Let me. <laughs> so, okay, indulge me. I, I'm, I'm paying for it. Just indulge me. But you know what? And, uh, that's it. See that? That's, yeah. If you look, you know, Circle D for a while, um, and the nice thing is, I had the data. You know, you deal with a lot of shops, and they buy this guy's head or this guy's converter, or this guy's stuff. No, don't worry about. It. I got it all right here. It, it's right here. I got yeah. all of it. Yeah. So you know, when I did all this stuff, like Circle D only listed up to like a thirty six hundred stall, and if you wanted more stall, they put you in a smaller converter. Well, right. the problem was when we got to the smaller converters they weren't efficient enough. Like you made them loose enough to, to really get some RPM, but then they were just sloppy and they never coupled up like I needed to. And I was like, well, I'm not arguing that we can't make that right, but I'm thinking that we can work with this converter and get what we need. And it'll be better because it's a heavy car. It'll be better up top. Right. And, and that, that, and I'm looking at the data, I'm watching how the converter, how much it flashes and how much it doesn't slip up top. You know, I'm I'm looking at data and analyzing it myself, saying, "Hey, you know, I'm telling you, this is what we need to use." And it worked out. You know, uh, push come to shove, but they work. We did a. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. I mean, I don't know how the I don't know how how the threads are still in the blocks in most of my cars because I've had the transmission in and out so many times. I mean, I've said I've had I've sent pictures in my driveway at the track at yeah. you know in any position. My car has been about every square inch of my property where I've had a transmission out of it. You know, when there's the cars in the way and, uh, and I, I've tried all of them. And, you know, now we've got a pretty good selection. In fact, the converters are so nailed down that I can tell Super D when they did something wrong. You know, yeah. I'll call up and say, Hey, man, you just, I just ordered five more converters. Um, they're a little off, you know, and they're like, Oh, there's no way. I was like, I'm telling you, I do cookie cutter builds. I mean, I did the exact same build. I can take the converters and swap them in the cars. Yeah. And, it follows a converter it's, and most <laughs> circle D does a really great job and they've been awesome to work with uh, yes. to make a, a converter. And every once in a while, you know, it's cause I'm customizing these converters so much. They're having to do a lot more than normal. So sometimes if Billy builds my converter instead of Joe, you know, um, sometimes he'd be like, Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think he got the fins bent quite enough. Um, yeah, just send it back and we'll do a little tweak on it and get it back. We'll get it right. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and you know what? Honestly, big shout out to Circle D. Uh, they are they are probably one of the easiest companies to work with. I love Circle D. Um, yeah. You know I'm a fan of their converters. I don't even I don't even sell any other converters. They're not even I don't even list them on my site. Um, and you know, one of the things I love about Circle D is something you mentioned before. You know how you're able to call them up and say, look, you know, I want to try this and even though, you know, in, in their knowledge base, they go, well, I, you know, we don't think it was worth it. They're still willing to right. say, you know what, let's, let's give it a shot. And that, 
that speaks volumes for them. Uh, for me anyway, as a consumer, uh, not just, not as a retailer, but also as a consumer, like to know that the company that you're buying from is not just saying, Hey, look, this is what we have. Take it or leave it. They're willing to think outside the box. And not right. only that, they're willing to explore outside the box at, at, at the risk of getting nowhere. But, you know, just like you, they're willing to push forward and say, okay, what can we do to get better? What can we do to, to come up with a better product? And, and that's that that's really amazing especially for a company i know they're not a, a massive massive company but they you know they're one of the bigger guys in converters and they're still willing to do stuff like that and that's that that's really awesome yeah they've really they've really grown a lot i mean <laughs> yeah. i mean i don't i don't know what percentage of the pie you know we are but i mean if you look back from selling like one or two six lady converters i mean i was like man I was like between me, you, and Adam. I was like, man, we have sold some converters. And I told him, oh once we start branching into the blower stuff, I was like, it, it's just going to keep going. So yeah. I couldn't even count how many circle D converters I sold. Yeah, you know, it's it's, but they've always been so so great to work with. You know, yeah. um, I yeah. mean, you know, even recently, I mean, uh, Jay just uh, just reached out to them because he had a bunch of converters. Um, from when they had that little hiccup with the the 3DPs. Um, yeah, they had they basically, you know, they came up, they, their source dried up. And yeah. then they tried saying, hey, you know, we're going to try to make this happen. They got another source, you know, supposedly all the everything met the criteria. Uh, but you know how it is, you know. It might look the Chinese same. Part, <laughs> we didn't meet Chinese part B, you know, it, it just it looked the same, but didn't work the same. And, you know, they it wasn't like they flogged it out. It was like, hey, you know, we found a substitute. We're going to get this stuff together. We'll get this stuff out. And they did. You know, they came yeah. through in the clutch when we needed stuff. But then it was like, hey, uh, uh, that thr those thrust bearings aren't holding up or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they were like. Oh. It, 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 it walks didn't. like a duck. It talks like a duck, but it's not a duck. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, when we had a problem, it was ever it was never any no questions asked. You know, I called them up and says, hey, you know, I, I got this. You know, it, it sounds like, you know, the converter's making noise. Yeah. You know. You're like, hey, pull it out. I'll send you a call tag, and and they they always were great taking care of me. I mean, That's, it wasn't like, well, if it wasn't, you know, most places it would be like, well, you go ahead and and send it to us, and we'll look at it, and we'll <laughs> we'll think about it. It could be our fault, but we're not going to tell you. Maybe we will tell you. I don't know. We'll yeah. think about it. But don't you worry, we're, we're also going to charge you for the time. <laughs> I'll tell you, I I had, and because I got a bone to pick with many ways, Cohen. I, I worked with Cohen doing converters and I was doing Cohen converters for a little bit. Well, I was having failures on them. Like uh, I had one balloon um, and then I had where the lockup clutches, Circle D kind of explained it. They make like, like some applications only has like a four tab clutch or a four cap tab plate. Well, on like the high powered stuff when I was locking it, it was shearing. It was shearing the plate, the, you know, the, the tabs off the plates. Oh, wow. I mean, I had a car with like, five miles on it and it, and it, it broke the lockup and they charged, I had to pay for shipping and then I had to pay to fix it. They didn't warranty nothing because it was past 90 days. You know what I mean? You know how it is. You buy a part. Hey man, trust me, this car ain't going, you know, it's when it's a turbo build, yeah. it's like, man, I got some, I got to still fabricate this and buy that. These I'm wheels ain't rolling for four months. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, how many, how many parts do you wait and be like, okay, I got to have all my parts. So the 98 starts. So I have enough time to make sure yeah. if anything's bad, I can fix it. Yeah. And they were just horrible to work with. Like they charged me to inspect it. They charged me to fix it. They charged me to clean it. They charged me like I, I paid like 500 bucks to rebuild a converter that should have been warranty. That was just that failed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was like, hey, it's just, you know, I mean, it completely failed. And yeah. I was like, dude, I had this car in the car for like five miles and it, well, you know, probably wasn't anything we did. You know, wasn't our fault. Yeah, well, yeah. Inst instant, instant, instant denial. Gotta pay to play. Yeah. And you know, and then so you know how it is when you start dealing with so many people, and you come back around. Now maybe Circle D doesn't know how everybody else operates, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they were the one I was, I was, I was like, listen, trust me, we're gonna deal with Circle D, and it, it'll be great. And, uh, yeah, and. and you know. And the reason I the reason I said that before, you know, circling back to that was, um, you know, after, when that hiccup happened, you know, Jay, who builds quite a few cars, right? Um, he uh, he had, I think he had 
gathered quite a bit. I don't know how many, but you know, quite a bit of converters that had you know, had had issues, um, and they were all replaced, right? Um, and he held on to the cores, and he just called up Circle D this week and said, "Hey, I have all these cores, pretty much." Um, and obviously, they're having the 3DP, 4DP backup right now, you know. And uh, and he said, you know, can I convert them into something that is available, you know? And and they were like, listen, man, just send them, you know. Uh, they actually, I think they even offered to to set a tag. And he's like, no, I'm not trying to get anything free. He's like, just he's like, I don't even know how old these things are. Considering, considering they sent them all the converters, to replace them without even getting the, the core back. Yeah, and, and, and they're they're really you just all these converters that are like. Well, technically, I got like you know six free converters. I mean, yeah. well, I mean, uh, keep in mind too, though, that um, I'm not to get a fixed or something. But. Yeah, but they also know they know Jay to be associated with yourself and me, so yeah. um, they know they know. I don't think we've ever been like, "Hey, man, just tell them it's bad, and we'll get one for free, and then we won't send that one back." You know, yeah, they were not. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think they would us. do that for. Uh, I'm sure they wouldn't do that for any any average guy off the street. But they, you know, that's true. Yeah, yeah. They, they know We've where it's going. Been, you know, I've never tried to pull the rug out from anybody or something. So no, they, same here. You know, um, I tell people all the time. You know, uh, I, you know, you could always trust that when I tell you something, it's the truth. And the reason is because uh, my memory is fucking horrible. <laughs> Well, like, this truth is only goes as far as what you know. <laughs> well, no, that that is true. You, but, truth to you. It yeah. may be the truth to you. It may not be the truth, but it's it, it might not be the truth. ultimate truth. Yeah, but it's it's my, no. it's my truth. It's my truth. Um, that's no, right. but you could always try. You could always trust that what I say is the truth because my memory is so bad that if I lie to you, I'm going to forget the lie I told, and then I'm going to end up blowing myself up. So I just tell the truth by default. You know, <laughs> right? And that. And that's the way I've always worked. I was like, listen, I, I'm going to tell you something and I won't remember it. But when you ask me again, I'm probably going to tell you the exact same thing yeah. unless you change the question. So you never have to worry about me trying to like, oh, yeah, yeah, use that cam. It'll work great. You know, because I'm going to tell you that if it was garbage, then it's still garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. Or if it was great, then it's still going to be the cam to use. <laughs> so when did you... Um when did you break into tuning? Obviously, you were building, right, for a while. But when did you break into HP tuners? And I, I, are you self-taught on HP tuners? I mean, how did how did that all come to fruition? Uh, I am I am pretty much self-taught on everything. Uh, right. Like I said, I read a Chilton manual cover to cover. So I learned how to I, – I taught myself. Um, Most people don't even know what a Chilton manual, manual is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Right? And there's – what's I don't know what the other one is, but I read that one too. Um. <laughs> well, they have the other ones, the little thin ones for, I mean, the ones I got, I mean, I read Bro, the manual manual. Chil Chilton manuals are like, they're like Encyclopedia Britannica's. Yeah. Yes, I read the whole thing. <laughs> Bopart, Dodge, Ford, all of them. I read all of them. Anyways, so, you know, I'd done all race car stuff and everything was carburetors and distributors and just little timing curves on the MSD. Um, and, you know, Back in the day, in the 90s, we were just burning these chips. Um, you know, guys were changing a few things in these chips, but it was Stone Age stuff. Um, uh, when they right. when HP tuners, I heard about HP tuners, and, you know, there was Diablo and SCT and stuff. And um, I, I didn't know. Not, it just became a must. I was like, listen, if I want to move to the next stage, I'm going to have to figure out this tuning thing. So when I bought right. the G8, I bought HP tuners. And there was EFI Live. Um, but HP tuners was a little more entry level. Like I could, like they wanted like 800 bucks for EFI live and HP tuners did the same thing for like 400 bucks. And it yeah. was no brainer. Uh, yeah. or it was worth 50 or so. I don't know what it was, but, um, so I just did my, I used it on my car. Um, you know, I pulled stuff off and what does that do? What does that do? What does that do? Oh, oh, now don't do that. <laughs> you know, so you learned, you basically just went through like all these 10,000 tables. And just realize what worked and what didn't work. Um, I, I was basically self-taught. I, I knew what the motor needed to go fast. I just didn't know how, what the computer needed to be told to make it to the motor. Uh, so it just right. took a while um, figuring out how to, you know, what to do with the computer and um, all the little adders and multipliers and takers and givers and that go on inside the computer that you have to work around. You know, it, you know the, the aftermarket stuff is so just straightforward you know what i mean 
It is right. surface value. Whereas the factory stuff, there's so much stuff going on in the background and sub tables and stuff. Like what you have to work with on a tuner is just a, a, just a scratch off picture of it. You know, there's so much other stuff going on in the background. So you got to be savvy and, and know what's going on and what to do and what not to do. Um, you know, back, back when I started tuning, everything was, everybody had a dyno slip. You know, it was about having what dyno slip. Oh, I made 500 horse on a dyno or I made this on a dyno. And I was like, I didn't have a dyno. I used the drag strip. Right. I was like, I care less what the dyno says. I know what the drag strip says and it says I'm faster than you. So I must be make more than that. Um, <laughs> but that was the thing. Everybody was hung up on these dynos, you know, and the, the first thing in anybody's signature is what horsepower torque it made or a picture of their dyno graph on. I didn't have one. Um, but there was a lot it's of so like <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. But there was a lot of things that were going wrong. That was like, you realize that they'll, I'll, I'll hear guys doing these stuff on the dyno. It's like, dude, they're not, they're making a bunch of adjustments to the car. And when it comes off the dyno and goes down the road, it's going to be wrong because they're doing, they're adjusting it at the wrong time. They're not letting it warm up enough or let this timers expire. And they're making all these feeling adjustments when the, when the computer's still doing a bunch of like, hey, I just added 20%. You, you're taking out 20% that's going to be gone in 30 seconds. But you made the right. dyno pull, it was still adding it. So they take this car and drive down the road and things like dead lean. And it's like, man, it says it makes 500 horse, but it feels like it makes 30. Yes. You know, and I was like, yeah, it's because they tuned it, you know, on a dyno. They didn't tune it yeah. on the street. So even though I didn't know why at the time, you know, there was a lot of things I did because I was tuning on a street. I just got lucky. You know, but as I tuned longer, I realized I was like, oh man, now I know why, you know, this work, why this tune worked better on the street versus the track. And, uh, I just learned so much drivability stuff. And when you do a tune on a dyno, it's just fuel and spark. You know, as long as you can keep it running, it's fuel and spark. And there's like a million other tables to mess with to try to make a car so it, it's, you know, it's not stalling or surging or, you know, make sure it drives good, shifts decent, you know, make sure the transmission stays in it. You know, there's so much more to it when you're doing these drivability tunes. You know, I used to, I used to keep a car for a week, you know, yeah. drop it off on the, you know, I'll finish the build. I'll tune it for the week to make sure startup's good, idle's good. It doesn't change or, you know, cause a lot of times guys, you get a car back and it was okay that day. Two days later, it's stalling. Right. I didn't touch it. But it's it's stalling like crazy, and you started to learn. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to. You have to change adaptability tables in the program, you know. And I was like, oh, I guess I, you know, you just learn to make those right. And uh, you know, yeah. now that I don't keep them for a week anymore, I kind of know what they need to be like, so I don't have to do that. But uh, yeah. in the same sense, it keeps me from going to like the new Gen Five stuff. Everybody's like, when are you gonna start doing direct injection? I was like, you know how long it took me to get this stuff right, and and HP, you know, all these tuning companies, there's so many black holes. It's like, it, it's like a trap door. Like there's so many tables that they give you. And it's like, they don't tell you that don't touch that table. Oh, that table, we didn't, we didn't map that table out. That's only supposed to be used on trucks, but it's a GM table. So we left it in there. But if you populate it or try to use it, it's going to like, it, it's going to create a nightmare for you. Right. And, was, and now with the newer cars, with all this, you know, additional torque management with these, you know, 10 speeds and eight speeds and the direct injection and all this, you know, you got electric fuel pump, you got a mechanical fuel pump. Uh, there's an HP tuners is still trying to unlock tables and make them more user friendly. And there's no guideline. You know, you got these, these newer cars and they don't ever tell you, don't go past this or this. You need to stay in here. You get the whole value. You know, if you want to right. put 64 degrees timing in this thing, you go for it. But you know, there's there's nothing to stop you. So with these aftermarket stuff, um, with the HP, the newer cars, uh, it's not that I can't. It's it, the tuning. It isn't the problem. It's tuning it within what you're given. And I just don't feel like turning out a bad product or having problems and dealing with. It. I was like, you know, other people have tackled that. You know, Brett from Prey. He is. Uh, he's. I let him take care of all the direct. He's nearby. You go find him. You can sit in line just like my people sit in line. <laughs> I got enough. I got enough to deal with. Yeah. So when it's, this it's part funny. dries up, when when my part dries up, then I'll, then I'll start tinkering around with direct injection or something. But yeah, but it's uh, not going anywhere. It's not going no, anywhere. no, I'm I'm fine. It's you know, funny I, that you mentioned uh, the dyno before because 
<clears throat> uh, truth be told, you know, before um, before I had met you, right, before we got in touch, um, you know, that's that's where I kind of thought the baseline was, right? I thought that was the, the standard. If it wasn't dyno tuned, it wasn't worth shit, right? Uh, street tunes were garbage. And, um, you know, it was, I remember with my car, right, um, uh, the SS, I believe, um, it was dyno tuned. And it ran like absolute shit. And I remember Jay was telling me, Jay's like, bro, you got to talk to Rick. You got to let him tune it. And I'm like, dude, I'm not, I, I'm not driving all the way to North Carolina to get, to hop on a dyno and get a tune. And he's like, he's like, he doesn't dyno tune and you don't have to go to North Carolina. And, uh, he had, you know, he had said, he's like, you know, he'll, he'll remote tune it for you, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, I'm like, listen, man, I said, we'll give it a shot. And that's when I had the, the BTR stage too, um, in the SS. And he's like, we'll give it a shot. And I'm like, all right, let's just do it. What's, I mean, what's the worst I can have? The car already drives like shit, you know? Um, and we had sent you the stock file and, uh, told you what I had in it. And I'm not gonna lie, man, I was skeptical. You know, now I had, I had no, I, me and you might've talked once or twice before that, but I didn't really use you for tuning. And, um, and he's like, he's like, just trust me. I trust the process, you know, if you will. So I said, okay, whatever, we'll do that. And I think it was like, I don't know if it was the same day or the very next day, um, you know, the tune was done, right? So in my head, I'm like, okay, you know, like, <laughs> so we load that we load the tune up and instantly it was, it, I mean, it was night and day. Like it was, the car went from, you know, someone having hands on sitting in the driver's seat with a laptop, tuning the car, giving it back to me and it running like dog shit to a guy I never met who lives nine and a half hours away, never seen the car. I just told him what was done to the car, sending me a tune and the car runs like a raped ape. And I'm like, wait, wait a second. How, like, how is he this good? You know, and you know, Jay, he's just like, told you you know and <laughs> you know and and uh and i'm like i'm like damn dude I, and i told him then i remember i remember clear as day i told him i said jay i am never going to anyone else ever again i don't give a shit like if rick can't tune it i'm not buying it you know like i, I don't want anyone else touching the car you know and uh and that's pretty much where it was forged. I'm like, I'm not, I, I don't give a shit. If you tell me, Joe, I can't touch your car for two years and the car sits for two years. I'm not, I'm not oh, letting like, anyone. You mean like, you mean like Jay's? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's be truthful though. Even when Jay's car was running, it sat for two years. <laughs> This is true. This is true. <laughs> it's funny because he, he said to me, what do you say? We were talking it's the day. like a never ending project. Like, it's like, ah, don't worry about it. I'm still, you know, he's always like, he's, it always seems like I can tell he's thinking about something. It's like, you know, I want to change something. I was like, you haven't driven it. Why do you need to change anything? And that, and that's exactly right. It's it's funny because I've said that to him. I'm like I'm like, bro, you I was don't like you even... drove the car like once with the wheels are on. You're already tired of it. We want a new set of wheels. Like, man, those two wheels are great. They look awesome. Yeah, well, 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 that's just, he's had them for three years. He's only driven them. <laughs> but I but I I've, I've told him I'm like I'm like you know you're buying you're changing up your setup before you had a chance to even experience the setup. You're like you know it's like you hit the track once and you're like okay cool time to redo the entire thing. You're like Jay, what are you doing? Um, but well, I gave him, I gave him, I know he was trying to get cradles and, you know, like a lot of things, like, you know, Jay's been plagued with just like parts like the rest of us. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. I got to, I'm trying to get this cradle and the cradles took forever. And then uh, his rear cradle, you know, he, you guys came down for the, uh, for the event, you know, back when we did our event yeah. and, uh, you know, you guys came down to that snowstorm, uh, right. And the cars came down and they were all white, you know. And I was like, man, and it's cold, but I was like, man, you got to wash those cars off, you know? And yeah. Jay had washed his car, right? But he never went and he never drove it anywhere where we were clean the undercarriage. So the car, after he left, he left the car here. So like when I brought the car and he says, hey, man, uh, you know, COVID hit and, and stuff got really late long. He says, hey, can you, uh, can you just go ahead and pull the motor out? You know, I, I kind of just put a tarp over the motor thing. I was going to be down like next week and end up being... Never. <laughs> and, you know, he's like, you just pull the motor out. So I pull the motor out. Then I pull the trans out. 
And uh, I told him when I had it in the air, I was like, hey, uh, you remember the other year when you dropped the car off? You know, it's kind of moist and mucky here. Well, all that salt has been like munching on your undercarriage for the last year and a half. And I was like, the car itself is fine, but you know, the front and rear cradle, uh, they're like they're like an 80, 80 Honda Civic. It's just about gone. I was like, man, it, it looks bad. Yeah. Looks like he, he never drove his car in the winter, but I was like, it looked like he'd been driving it in the winter. So he's, you know, he's, he's like OCD and he's like, man, I, I just can't have it. So oh, no. I, gave my, I gave him my rear cradle. He's, I think he's going to blast it and powder coat it. Probably. And then he's got one of the new ones to put in the front. I got yeah. his motor out of the stand. So um, if I can ever stop messing with my <laughs> time pit, um, I'm going to try to uh, get his motor built. I, I have to get it built because I got like four motors at the machine shop that have to go on the same motor stand. So his, I told him, I was like, it's not coming off the stand until it's built. And once it's built, I'm going to be, I'll be texting Jay saying, Hey buddy, I got this motor, this trans, it yeah. just needs you and the rest of the parts to put it together. <laughs> yeah. Catch a fucking flight and finish this shit. You know, I'm telling you, if you started charging them storage, it'd be done. <laughs> I own the car. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, hey, possession's nine tenths of the law, bro. You've had that thing right. for what? Two I could, years, three I could years? have applied for a title and got it. <laughs> you probably could. You probably could. I, I wanted to ask, you know, um, I, I, I know you have a day job, right? Um, what did you ever think of, 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 you know, opening up your own like bigger speed shop or, or, you know, you're, you're, you're content, you know, where you're at. Well, you know, I'm, as I explained, I, I always have my hands in everything. Like, you know, I'm, I, I do it all. And I, and part of the problem is I worked, I worked at a speed shop and I've worked with plenty of guys that, you know, were someone like me that's maybe didn't have the same experience, but they're like, Hey man, yeah, I'm a smart guy. I'm going to open my own speed shop. I'm like, dude, right. man, you got to want it because, you know, having your own shop, it, it, it takes you away from, all the stuff you normally used to do. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know, when they bring the car to, to me, they're like, they know I'm the one that's going to be porting the heads or I'm the one that's going to be tightening the head bolts or putting the trans or putting the converter and I'm the one tuning it. You know, when you take it to a shop, once you start having a shop, it, it, you know, there's so many things that keep you tied up. It's like, uh, yeah. Hey, Bob, can you go ahead and, uh, Put it. See if you can put a tune together for me. Get in that car, and uh, I'll try to get to it and finish it up. You know, you never get to it and finish it up. Right. You just get, you get pulled away from all the details you used to keep tight. Um, you know, oh, I didn't put that car together, and you know, something came loose or it leaked, or the radiator hose came off, and it's like, well, it makes me feel bad and look bad because I didn't do it. And it's 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 hard letting go of that control. You know what yeah. I mean? And, well, and, and it's your, also. When you're putting your now you're putting your name on something that this guy's doing, this guy's doing, this guy's doing, and, and you've seen it with shops where you know you get see the shop being completely trashed because some flunky mechanic left a a ruler or something or you know a wrench in the oil pan, you know, or who knows yeah. what, you know. No, but you see, you see it came yeah. off down the road or something, you know. It's like, well, yeah. I didn't leave the wheel loose, but my guy did. I mean, you know, and you, you, I mean, I've seen I've seen things. shops I've seen shops get torn apart because you know something stupid like you know even cross threading lug lug bolts you know what I'm saying lug nuts you know and, and it's you know you can make a hundred people happy and they're gonna talk half as loud as the one guy you pissed off right um, right you know, you know what it is no news is good news <laughs> exactly exactly so so basically it comes down to quality control really I mean your name is important yeah. and you know and, you, you don't want somebody else you know representing you. Well, in, in this line of work, 90% of the work, especially in, in the hot rodding work, nothing is like a bolt on in most cases. You're going right. to get an intake and be like, well, this, this intake kind of fits. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to do this and do this and do this. You know, yeah. where does it say to do that? Oh, no, it's just something I came up with. Yeah. You know, I just, to me, it just figured it out and that's just what made it right. Yeah. It doesn't say that. Or oh, we don't use that because they use cheap plastic. It's just. You have to be so ingenuitive with everything. Um, it's so hard for people to miss stuff. Well, that's the bolt I took out. I was like, yeah, but when you put that part on it, it needed a longer bolt. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. Well, didn't you notice when you're tightening it that it, it didn't kind of ever tighten up? 
<laughs> well, kind of. It it's just to me, it wasn't worth it. Um, no, I, I get it. I, I get it. About it. Plenty of guys have asked about it, and I just, I just, I've always been happy dealing direct. You know, when I did, you know, we worked on your car. Um, so, or when I work on anybody else's car, I, I just take a lot of pride in what I do. And, yeah. You know, it's yeah. just easier to keep them fast. It's, and I, the, part of the problem is because I've been so direct and personable with everybody is you don't, you don't shed customers hardly. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, the customers I had in 2010, I still have them. So they're still tinkering or, you know, going through and or bringing me stuff. So when you keep having the same people, if you're not shedding people and they're keep getting back at, you know, they always seem to keep back in line. Like Jay, how long have I known Jay? He's still um, in line. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's still in line. You know, it's like getting on a good ride. It's like you just get back in line and the line, if you bring in more people, the line gets longer. Yeah. So, it, you know, that's why I kind of say like underground, I always say there's a secret knock or you got to have the VIP or the golden ticket or something yeah. because that's really the case because I, I don't, you know, I've kept a lot of people fast. And, you know, most of the time when people, get burnt out or tired or move on. It's because they got frustrated and they spent a ton of money and didn't get what they wanted. You know, yeah. they get yeah. burned out or, you know what I mean? Someone told them the end of the ride is here. And it was like, Oh, so I can't mod or do anything else to the car. It's like, Nope, that's it. You ran a 1130 or 1170 and that's as fast as it'll ever go. Nope. It can't go. You know what I mean? No one, no one pushes, pushes the envelope any further. And uh, for a lot of people, they said, well, RPM, you know, they said it made 800 horse or runs 1080s or whatever. And they're like, well, uh, that's all I get. And I've, I've spent so much money and I bought all the best parts. So when, when you help people spend the money right and go fast and they aren't, yeah, it doesn't come apart every day. It, they have a lot more passion and pride for the car. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, I mean, you know, you, you definitely have uh, a very faithful cult following, right? I mean, I think, I think it's hilarious when uh, it, is, it, it is cult like it is. It is. It's, I think it's hilarious when, you know, when I'll stop at your house, uh, like for example, like when we stopped at your house, um, where, where were we coming back from? Um, Georgia, when we stopped at your house, come back from Georgia. Right. And uh, we dropped off some stuff and picked up some stuff. I thought it was funny because I took a picture of like literally just the corner of like your 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 yellow garage, right? Just the corner of your front garage, and I just put a post up with like you know like the eyes emoji, and it's funny because you know uh, you had a bunch of people were like, "What's this?" You know, or like and then you had like those like every now and then you had those people chime in like, "I know, I know that driveway, I know exactly where you're at," you know, and it's uh, <laughs> it, it's funny, you know, um, I, I I and. I, I like the idea um, of how, like you said, like the golden ticket or you almost have to be on like the list, right? Like there's like a, there's like a bouncer uh, in front of the Rick Crawford, you know, uh, compound who's like, you well, know, like, what's your name? Who invited you? What's going on? What are you doing? Yeah. You know, uh, but it, it, it also says a lot about, about you and the quality of the work that you do. Right. I mean, if people are, people are willing to seek you out and, and I mean, I've had people contact me and I know other people, I've had people contact them and say, Hey, you know, you're in with Rick. How, how, can you get me in? Can you reach out to him for me? And, and I tell people I'm like, listen, man, like the only thing you could do is contact him on Facebook. I'm not, I'm not going to be the middleman and, and, you know, uh, vouch for you or, uh, you know, and say, you're a good customer, you know, you're a buddy of mine, Rick, take him on, you know? Um, you know, and it's, it's funny because a, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're chasing what they've heard, right? Oh, Rick's the best, you know? So everyone's like, I gotta get with Rick. I gotta get with Rick. And, you know, and it's, 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 it's it's flattering to you, you know, uh, uh, you know, to see the lengths that people will go to to just to try to get on your list. You know what I mean? I have, I have gotten pinned at the track a few times. Like oh, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm at the track, and uh, and you know, I, they people know I'm at the track, and some people come to the track looking for me. And like I said, I've been pinned a few times. But in general, if you look like you're on the laptop and on a car, you look busy. People, a lot of people respect that. And like, well, you know, I, I'll wait. And a couple of times I've been caught. I was like, crap, I don't have my laptop. I'm out in the car. And I'm like, it's like you're looking for cover. It's like, man, there's incoming. Pick up a handful, like fake it. Uh, uh, yeah, one second. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hold on. Pick up the phone. You know, you don't have your phone or nothing. You're like, you feel like, oh my God, 
<laughs> I have no defense. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's crazy because it's uh you know I'm sure as flattering as it is, it's also like you know like guys, I only have so much time in a day here. You know, I, I you know, I, and really, it's you know, people think it's like ah, you know, that guy's a you know, even even when he talked to some people uh, that you know you haven't met and they they meet you and you're like, man, I I thought you were like, I don't know dick or something you're like well it's really you know people you know because people come up with their own version of the story of how it works or doesn't work and i was like man i was like it's not that you're worthy or not worthy or you know you are you know big bucks and you're you know i I don't take you know your dollar bill or whatever it's it's just the fact that i was like man listen i am loyal to the people that i'm loyal to and i was like you know i can't i'm only one person you know i i work (laughs) i work probably more than anybody and I've, i've been doing it for a long time it's not like i just started this yesterday i mean i've been working you know, right. 100 a week for as long as I can remember. And yeah. uh, and it, it doesn't seem to end. And I work hard for, try to work hard for everybody. Uh, but I am getting older, which they making it easier. Um, but I just, there's just no time to put in another person. I try to sneak the ones and twos here and there, but it, it gets hard. You know, you start getting more savvy about stuff and you realize when some guy calls you and says, hey man, I, I got this car built, man. I, if I can get you to tune the car, I know my everything will be fine. And you're like, you know, the first couple of times you're like, yeah, man, yeah, I'll, I'll set you up for Saturday, bring it down. And man, I'll get that tune squared away. And they show up and the next thing you know, it's like you got another car in your drive. I was like, man, what happened? And you realize they brought you a car and this was backwards or they didn't have this or they needed that or this was broke or that's broke or someone boomed, burned it up before it even got to you. And that's why it ran bad. <laughs> and realize you're because you're the tuner, you were stuck as it's like. What's your problem? I mean, I brought the car to you to tune. If it's not done or right, it's, yeah. it's you. And it's yeah. like, and a lot of times it's like, well, you realize that I want to get paid to tune your car. But if I can't tune your car, it's not like I'm going to be like, man, better luck next time. Pay me, take your junk and tow it home. You know, you know, so you're kind of on the hook. You kind of get stuck on the hook a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, for being like, uh, you know, I, I, I want you to have your car and I want it to be right. So you get stuck taking a lot of cars that you didn't want to take. You know, it's like you took right. someone else's project that was a basket case. You're like, oh, my God, how do I get stuck with this thing? You know, I just told, you know, I've already got five cars here, 10 cars here that I need to have done. And now I've got another one because I tried doing a tune on Saturday, you know. Yeah. And after it happens a couple of times, it's a snowball effect. It's like, hey, you think we can go to the track and tune the car? It's like, I'd rather not. I don't need your broken trash, your broken axle, your burnt head gasket, or whatever it is that's going to happen. Yeah, uh, of course, at that point, it's on you now. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get a car, and it's like, well, why did it blow a head gasket? I was like, well, I don't know now, but after I tore it apart, I realized, you know, someone put the wrong head bolts in it, or they were all like finger tight, you know, or you yeah. know, someone reused your stock head bolts, or they used some you know, Felpro head gaskets that were garbage or something. They put RTV on the head gas, something, you know, yeah. I can't say I'm infallible and it, maybe there wasn't a one, one time, but in most cases, once I tear it down, it's like, Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. That's hundred percent your fault. Yeah. <laughs> and, and luckily, you know, I've been through enough uh, problems and failures and stuff that, and I'm, I've been savvy enough through the years that I'm, I'm pretty good at, you know, deducting, you know, deductive reasoning is like, Oh, Hey, you know, you know, Hobbies was a good example. You know, if we went to, went ahead and just tackled it, you know, it very easily could have went back to whoever. And then, you know, next thing you know, it's like, Hey, hobby, man, it's just, that's just the way it goes, man. Uh, you just have to buy another one, you know? Right. And luckily, you know, we were able to tear it apart, kind of deduce what was wrong. And it, it saved him from buying, you know, a lot of money, spending a lot of money. Oh, yeah. So, for sure. For sure. I'll so actually. It, I'll be hitting you up soon. Uh, I think uh, I think I think Jay's finally getting. Uh, uh, I still got that trailer here ready for you, man. For as soon as you want to take a car here or there, bro, I'm telling you, man. I I think I'm not going to have a choice but to buy it off you, man. To be honest with you, hey, you know what? Me, I'm good. Yeah, I told him I was like, you're taking one of the trailers back. I, you can we'll, we'll put it on a wheel. You can spin the wheel or Destiny or whatever it is. But make sure you got. If you don't put a trailer hitch on, I'm going to ratchet strap it to the bumper. <laughs> There's a bunch of zip ties, like a hundred zip ties. A hundred zip ties. I'm <laughs> sure there's a YouTube video or somewhere where someone has done it and made it work. So a hundred percent. It's funny because the trailer he keeps because Jay. So Jay wants my trailer, right? And um, he wants my open. So he's like Joe. He's like he just. He's like I talked to Rick for you, and um, 
you know, he said the next time you're down there, you're taking one of his trailers home. And I'm like, I'm like, I, well, I told him, I said, I love how you say you talk to Rick for me as if any of this was my idea. This is you and Rick telling me that I'm I'm buying one of Rick's trailers. I'm telling you, he's like your spokesman on retainer, whether you like it or not. He <laughs> no, is he's a your spokesman. Player. He's he's looking out for himself because he wants my open. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wants your clothes too. Don't worry. He wants both. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, you know, and I told him and I and I'll I'll tell this to anybody. I was like, you know, anybody that's in the hot rodding stuff, you know, it's 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 storage, it's your garage, it's oh, yeah. it's enclosure, it's 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 locked up, you know, there's there's no rock falling down or guy throwing something on it it's not getting dirty it, yeah. it's not getting rusty it's it's nice it's like a little bubble for it yeah and uh truth be told you can, rent, you can rent a truck the once or twice a year the diesel commercial truck you can rent that 250 from whoever <laughs> man i don't care about that I'll, I'll tow it with the 1500 i give a shit what's the worst that happens you know what I'm saying like you buy the truck and you get home when it burns up <laughs> exactly exactly business expense <laughs> But, I, you know, I always tell people, it's like, you know, no, everybody's like, oh, man, I just don't want that. Man, I don't want that $1,100, you know, diesel truck payment. I was like, no, rent that thing for a thousand bucks one time and give it back to them. It's all theirs. It's their problem. Yeah. I, I mean, truth be told, I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I was looking at, I was looking into it. And uh, truth be told, I mean, uh, the G, the GVRW on my truck, I mean, I, I, I could tow. A, a why, beat, why beat your truck? Why beat the truck that you need that you drive that you don't want burned up transmission? Who wants to take their truck to the track, even if it's under warranty? Who wants to deal with the dealership and them screwing something up? I just rather keep a nice, good truck. How about I? How about I tow it with somebody else's truck? Beat that thing. Yeah, Not that you're gonna beat it, but you know what I mean. If you're gonna tow a big, heavy trailer up and down, you know, through all the potholes in New York and wherever else, I rather do it with somebody else's truck or renter that I know I don't have to replace the tires or the shocks or. Or the or the no, I mean, or just, wherever else. they can deal with that. I'll just rent one of those uh, when I, when I need one. I'll just rent one of the uh, what is it the the Home Depot trucks for nineteen ninety nine a day. Oh <laughs> just, I, yeah, I, got a whole, I got to haul some lumber. Yeah, let me, let me take yeah. this truck. Well, I mean, my, uh, my buddy does it, um, and I've yeah. done it. When my my truck got rented, it was in the shop, and I was like, "Hey, man, I I know you're going to give me a truck, but the problem is, is I'm getting ready to go." Now, this is, I think, one of the G8 events I was going to. I was like, man, I need, I need like a loaner. I need like a diesel truck. I'm pulling a 24 foot enclosed trailer. If I use that truck you give me, you're going to be coming to get that one too to fix. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, they, I can't remember if it was Ryder or whoever, but they got like those, like a 250 pickup truck, yeah. the diesel four door, That's what cab, like. it's commercial, so it doesn't have like the, it doesn't have the, you know, the plush everything and Bluetooth everything, yeah, but, but it's a good truck. That's what that's what Colombo did recently. Uh, they went somewhere and, and he rented the I think it was Enterprise Commercial and, and yeah he got it was like right. a, a a well equipped F two fifty you know yeah. it, it works out um, you know all right cool, man like, just come just come just come up with a fucking price already for me because you know you, we we talk about it and you know it's, at this point it's just gotta happen you know. Uh, I'm just waiting for Jay to pick. As soon as I get Jay's car done, it's his car's going back in the trailer. That's what he said. He's like, he said, he said, I'm gonna end up towing your trailer, my car home with your trailer. It's gonna be in the trailer and it's going back with him. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Just throw it on his tag then. But it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because um, because well, not funny, but he was telling me, uh, you know that. We're looking at probably getting my car in in the next month or so, uh, the white car, because um, that's getting a full overhaul. You, you know the story with that, right? Or no? Mm, no. Yeah. So, I probably got a hold of it. <laughs> so a customer of mine, a good customer uh, who's become a friend, um, this guy, Eric, he did hear about that story. Yeah, he ended up so he he ended up building his G8 uh exactly how I would want mine to be built, you know, if I had the time, right, and the money. Um and he had gone he had, he had done an amazing build, right? It was a it's a, a Thompson 408 uh stroker. It's it's got uh I believe it's your I don't know if it's your blower. No, it's got the Joker's full tilt on it. Um 
a whole bunch of stuff. I, I, I think it's one of your trans is in there. It's it's just got a lot, a lot of stuff done. It's got, you know, full, full, full uh, four fuel system. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's running uh, built trans. It's running a uh, built diff, you know, uh, you, know every, you name it, it's done, right? It it's fuel system on it, which is one thing you need to do. <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. At first, um, I thought you're at like you like your something happened to your car, like it blew up and it came to a million pieces, and you're trying to fix it. What are just upgrading? Because that's yeah, what well, that for, is signing you up for free for uh, the uh, you pay for it builds. <laughs> well, pretty much. Well, you you know how it is, man. I mean, you, you know your car. Well, not you don't know how it is, but for me, my car is always like the last one that gets touched, right? Like I I, I literally in the back. Well, of my that's warehouse, exactly what happens to me all the time. What do you mean? Oh yeah, true. I always talk to you at like two o'clock in the morning, like a day yeah, before you an event you're going model, to. Yeah, and I just got started on my car, and yeah, uh, that, I'll be working. I'm one. Of the, I'm sure I got plenty of stories where I've been in the trailer working on it, putting it together while someone's towing me to the track. I believe it. I believe it. And and so this car, you know, we we built it. Like I said, how I if I had to make a laundry list of what I'd want to do to my car, that's this is what this guy did, right? Um. And, you know, he took it to the track first time, first time down the track. Um, I th- we, we believe we suspect the lower radiator hose popped off and uh, he wet the track and his car shit the bed. Um, he ended up hitting both sides of, uh, of the of uh, after the trap, both both sides. Right. So cars, in essence, totaled. Right. Um, he crashed and he hit the front sides, back rear. He hit pretty much both, everything. Both fronts, both fronts. So both, uh, you know, um, both supports are bent. You know, it's it's it was a, it was a hard hit. He was about a, a 140 when he hit. Um, and luckily, you know, uh, nothing happened. You know, uh, to the drivetrain whatsoever. I mean, the car starts right up. It runs amazing. Um, obviously, can't keep it running too long. It's got you know, it's it's dry, but. Uh, Long story short, um, his insurance, the way it worked out, you know, he says to Jay, he's like, listen, I can't, he's like, if I claim this as a total, you know, if I, if I call the insurance company, they're going to give me street value for the car, which is shit. Right. Um, the drive, like, so, the drive line is worth three times what the car is worth. Exactly. Exactly. So me and Jay were talking to him and, and I'm telling him, I'm like, I'm like, Eric, man, you know what you should do? You should just buy an SS, right? It's a nicer, newer G8. Buy an SS, you have an entire drive line. Try to find a, an SS with like, you know, a gazillion miles on it. Get it cheap and then swap swap everything over. Um, he ends up saying, you know what, I just want to get out. Right. Um, okay. So he talks to me and Jay. Uh, he comes up with a price. It was affordable for me. I said, you know what, I'll buy it. So I bought the whole car as it sits, right? So... Now the, the all we're doing is I'm literally I'm literally copying and pasting right I'm, I'm I'm taking everything out of his car and bringing it over to my car and I'm gonna take everything out of my car because you know my entire drive line's young I got maybe the motor's only got like thirty thousand on it and then we rebuilt the whole thing so um half of those are, half of those are from Jay <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking I'm taking everything out of my car and I'm just gonna sell it as like a whole package here you go right um. And I'm putting everything in, uh, from his car in my car. So in the in the interim, he ended up buying. He found a, I believe it's a GXP, same color, um, with a 416 in it, right? And yeah, so now he wants Jay to build that for him. And uh, it was going to be an NA build. Now he's going crazy. He's doing 2650. You're going to get that tune too, I'm sure. Um, but Probably. So, yeah, so so Jay's building that, but he wants to get some parts off the old car. So I'm bringing my G8, I'm bringing the wreck to G8, and this guy's bringing his G8. We're all going to Jay's shop, and we're gonna go up one night with you know it, till like three o'clock in the morning, and we're just gonna start swapping parts back and forth. Um, <laughs> you know, all three motors are gonna be out at the same time, and we're just gonna be pushing stuff back and forth. Um, so, you know, you'll be getting that soon. I'm sure you'll be, you'll be hearing from me, but oh yeah, you know, it's crazy. So he, he, uh, I think I'm going to try out that, um, that fueled by AI system in, in my car. I'm going to sell him back his four system. I've seen a couple, I've seen a couple of pictures of it. I haven't tried it, but it, it looks like it's nice stuff. Yeah, I'll be honest. It's really high quality. Um, the only thing, the only downside to it. And, and I try to tell people this is. Um, you really have to know what you're doing with the wiring because it, it doesn't come with any install. It's just just a slosh bucket, pretty it's much. Yeah, it's a hot rod. 
It's not, yeah. and that's where, and that's what I was telling you before. I was like being savvy with stuff like that, and you just you got to be able to figure stuff out. Hey, yeah. we got to take a time out because I need to go out of the grass. Okay. All right, I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> As if we don't have enough to talk about, right? Yeah. Got a, a drink of champions, right? Yeah. Oh, bro. I wish I had one. I'm drinking. Uh, one of my guys left his monster here, so I'm drinking that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Black Friday midnight oil. Yeah, I'm telling you. So, um, yeah. So, so long story short, he, uh, what we're ending up doing now, right? Um, I had the FS1000, right? The Fuel by AI kit. I had sent that over. Uh, to Carl over Vaporworks, right? And, and that's new since when you brought your car down, you just had like a ZL1 pump, I think, on it. That's all I have on it still with the with the JMS with the JMS booster pump. Yeah, that's yeah, why that's what we, so people people don't understand. I was like, listen, man, we we got that thing into the nines with like way not enough of pump. Like we're just like, hey, what, what kind of fuel are we on? I said, like, we're gonna we're gonna find some stuff in my garage to put in it because. <laughs> there ain't enough to run E85. So, uh, and I'm not pushing a stock bottom end with pump gas that hard. So, oh, I'm sure we we put a little mix of something in it to be like, yeah, this will work. And yeah, it, it was, did. It pulled it off and ran great. <laughs> yeah, it was E85 and uh, meth. It was a 50 50 mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was meth. And I think we had some unleaded race fuel here or something I threw in there. Just kind of like, man, we got to get the injector duty cycle down. You got like no fuel pressure. Oh, I got nothing. I got nothing. But yeah, so I, I had sent it off to him and, and I told him, I said, look, I just, I want this uh, to run because I, I told him the goals. And he ended up, you know, building, I think he used, um, he used his, you know, his, his CTSV kit and he ended up creating, he, he made me a one-off now where it's going to be fully controlled by his computer. Um, but it's running dual 525, the Hellcat pumps. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to sell this guy, Eric back his four system and I'm going to run that. Um, but it, it should be, it should be, uh, should be a fun time. You know I mean? That motor, that motor makes every bit of, you know, if I had to guess, you know, 12 to 1300. So, um, and I don't, I don't think it's anywhere near maxed out. So it'll be, it'll be a fun time. Yeah, you'll, you'll get to tear up more stuff. Oh yeah, of course. Because you race it all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I barely, I, I barely drive the car. <laughs> like I, barely, I, I race the SS more than I race the G8. What is it with you guys that sell parts that have race cars and don't don't race them? Because Adam's the same way. Adam's like he drives it up and down the road. And he's like, "When are you gonna take it to the dyno the track?" Never. I was like, well, why did you build it? Well, there's a little different. I mean, because Adam Adam doesn't have much of an excuse because my man is at the track all the time, right? Um, here true. in Jersey, he we only have to race it though. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't have an excuse. Like me here in Jersey, we only have like one halfway decent track and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Um, And for me, I mean, you know, it's what, it's almost 11 o'clock here now. And this is pretty much my five to six days a week work hours. You know what I'm saying? Like eight in the morning till about midnight. So um, who the hell's got time? I don't have time, man. I don't have time. That's why uh, the reason I want to do this build is so that when I go to these events like LS Fest and I go to the extravaganza and I go to go to these events, I could actually race my car rather than, you know, um, kind of just be stuck in the booth and be like, shit, man, I, I didn't even bring my car because I've been running around crazy and the cars, you know, the cars at 130 percent duty cycle. <laughs> so it's like, well, and, and like anything, because, you know, you're even though you're like a vendor for a lot of stuff, um, mm-hmm. it. It, it kind of it's kind of like the same thing. It's like, man, I, I look back and I was like, man, if I just stayed with like an NA car, like my world would be like a much simpler, just simpler place, you know, yeah. a lot less headaches and problems. But, you know, you, you eventually find yourself just evolving just to validate who you are kind of a little bit. You know, you, you yeah. always feel like you just close yourself off. So sometimes you, know, you show up to an event with, you know, your built G8 and you're like, well. He is G8, you know, I mean, he is G8 Joe. So, I mean, of course he's got like this monster machine because, you know, they kind of, it's kind of like he expected. Like if you showed up with like a stock SS, they'd be like, really? You're like the vendor of everything. And this is, this is all you got. (laughs) You're you're absolutely right. On a car. That's great. (laughs) You're absolutely right. It's funny you say that because, um, 
right next door to me is he's a performance. You think you've got the mod list like that doesn't end because you uh. you have access to everything. You have no excuse not to have it on your car. And Jay loves to spend your money. <laughs> oh my god, dude! And, and it's funny you say because like I so lately with the way things have been with black back orders everywhere, um, I literally in the back of my warehouse back here I have probably a six foot by six foot section to the ceiling of parts for my car, right? That I just keep <laughs> snagging one. Put it. Wait, wait, you're, which car? You've got more than one. Both. both actually. <laughs> and a couple parts for the truck too. Um, but I have this parts, these parts back there. And it's funny. Cause like, not funny. It sucks actually for me, but you know, somebody will order something and we'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just be like, okay. Uh, and, and expected my guy to pack it up and ship it. And like a day or two goes by and I'm like, why isn't it shipped yet? And he's like, Oh, we're out of it. And I'm like, fuck. All right. And I run back and I'm like, oh, that. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll just send him mine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, and, and, and that's, so now I have incomplete parts list back there because I'm sending the customers my stuff just to fulfill the orders, you know? Um, you know, I mean, I'm happy to ha- I'm happy to do it, but at the same time, it's like, all right, well, now I now I get stuck on the back order to replace it, you know. Um, but you know, it's, that it takes long enough to get to it that you get it. Yeah, that well, that too. Yeah, uh, it's just it, at the end of the day, it's uh, it just keeps getting put on hold. That's why I told Jay when he when he had told me he was working on this guy Eric's car, and he's like, yeah, and I need I need you know to grab some stuff off the gray car, which is the car I bought from. Him. I'm like, look, dude, I'm like, what do we have to do to get my car up there? I need to get it done. You know, I, 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 cause even as it is now, like when I drive it around, I know it's so, I know it's so far past where it should be as far as the duty cycle is, um, that even on pump gas, I'm like, I don't, you know, like, not that I don't feel comfortable driving it. I trust the car, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, if, if I'm on the highway and a Hellcat gets next to me and I want to fucking smoke them, I'm like, I don't want to beat the hell out of this thing. You know what I mean? Like. So it's, uh, it sucks. I can't wait to get the car to a point where I can say, okay, now I know I'm well in the safe zone. And if I, you know, if, if I beat the piss out of it, it it's there to take it, you know? Um, yeah. but right now it's just not, and I know it's not. So it's like, kind of like, it just irks me because I see it, I see it at home in the garage and I'm just like, come on, man, let me drive the piss out of this thing, you know, but <laughs> it'll be there soon. It'll be there soon. Um, Where's a, a long winter? What's up? You got a long winter to work on it. Yeah, well, I think now, it'll be, it'll, right now I'm coming into my race season. Most time, you know, everybody up north goes like into like tear apart your car mode, and I'm like, no, this is my like race season. This is like, like, hey, are you gonna get that stuff? To, I figure I'm gonna take my car down this winter. I'm gonna send you some stuff. I'm like, ah, uh, time out. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be gone this week. This week, you know, we got PRI. We had. I just came back from import versus domestic. You know, there's, you know, there's always a lot of like yeah. all event, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, this is something that I want to enjoy. You know, a lot of times guys go to these car events in the middle of a summer and I'm like, dude, it's 95 degrees. You know, I want to be at a pool or in somewhere air conditioned. The last thing I want to do is be stuck in a car with the windows up in a suit with the helmet on dying with no air on. Yeah. Yeah. For the car, you know, for the like, car not to break any records. Cause it's 95 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm definitely not going to break any record. I'm just, I'm like, what part? Of, I was just thinking, I was like, what part of this is fun? I was like, I can't wait to get out of this car and go park in the shade and take off the suit. I'm like, man, I, yeah. I don't know how people race in the summer. I mean, if you were in Canada, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's nice up there in the summer. Yeah, well, I mean, here, I mean, it's in the winter. It's just so fucking miserable. Like you don't want to leave the house. You know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm headed to Florida. You know? But you, you, you mentioned you're you're going to PRI next week, right? Or two weeks yeah. from now? Yeah. We got we to gotta, we gotta meet up while we're out. I'm, me and Jay are going out there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you go last year or have you been? Or? No, this is my first time going to PRI. I usually go to SEMA. Okay. So, but it, I'm, uh, looking, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's funny. You know, people, you know, I didn't, I, I always wrote off PRI because it was during my rental time. You know, this is like, hey, this is race season. Man. Yeah. This is when the track's open. I can do anything I want. Um. Uh, you know, we've done our events and uh, the Holden Winter Nationals or, you know, Winterfest or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, to me, it, that turn, always turned into work fest for me because you, everybody brings their cars down and they break. And they're like, uh, hey, why I, you're I'm here, gonna, yeah. just going to go to your place and uh, you can fix it. Right. I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, why not? You know, 
half your car, you know, half the cars are gutted at my house anyways. You know what I mean? Everybody's gutting them on Friday and going to the track on, you know, Saturday. And I was like, I've got like this, it looks like a parts, parts yard, you know, everywhere there's seats and exhaust and tires <laughs> and jacks and floor panels, whatever you want to call it. It's laying all over my yard, all over the driveway. And I'm like, yeah. it, it was, I mean, it was fun. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm actually looking for, I want to, I want to do one next year. We got to talk about doing one for 23. Yeah, you know, I, I still miss you. Know, I have a lot of people that ask me, and I, I still like when we did the rent of the Expo Center. I mean, that was so that awesome. Was a, yeah. That was, I mean, really, we had Circle D there. We had the banners, the booths. I mean, I think we did a killer job. It was, uh-huh. it was a shame that you know weather got the better of us, and yeah. I don't know. I just, we should have, we should have totally killed it. You know, yeah, that was, you know, it, that was an awesome job. Well, of course, of course, like the week that we choose, like the week before we, we, you know, we, we have kickoff fucking, uh, they're calling for rain, you know, it, 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 like two out of the three oh, days. Yeah. And you're like, come on, man. We got that. We had that basically a blizzard went through up north and then we got rain here on Saturday and uh, we were just lucky enough to pull off, you know, the yeah. expo center and racing on the same day. I was like, all right, plans change. And it was last minute, you know, yeah. everybody let's scramble out of here. Shut this place down. We're going straight to the track. We're going to run the whole event just yeah. tonight. Yeah. Oh, it's cold out. Don't worry. I'm going to spray the track down. The track says they'll turn on the lights. And man, you know, it was, it was just amazing that we pulled it off. Yeah. You know? It was, a, it was a lot to do, but it was, it was good, man. I really want to, <laughs> I really want to do it again, man. I, I, it was, it was a really good time. Uh, it was it was cool to do the expo center and stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I thought it was great. You know, even though even though we were like, okay, everybody disconnect the batteries, no fuel in the cars, y'all gonna get pushed in. I'm like, uh, which nobody did anyway. I didn't do this. We drove them all in, parked them all. <laughs> yeah, they're like nobody can nobody can have more than a quarter tank of gas. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna just drain them right here in the parking lot, just dump it on the ground. <laughs> we'll just keep doing, fucking doing burnouts in the parking lot for two hours until we uh, until we'll we drain all of them. The gas is gone. <laughs> no, but, I mean that was I loved it, man. I thought that was great. Yeah, absolutely. It was. It was. It was a really good time. Uh, I'm. I'm. I, you know, it's funny because I still to this day I have uh, quite a few people ask me. You know, like, hey, are you got? Are you going to do another uh, Winter National? Are you going to go back down there? I'm like, me and Rick touch on it all the time. You know, and uh, we 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 just got to nail it in and just say, fuck it, we're doing it. Yeah, the, the track. You know, the track going through their uh, woes of you know ownership and stuff is you know, and then we had the COVID stuff that you know screwed things up a lot. You know, that's really throwing a wrench and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping now that uh, the guy that actually is leasing the whole property, he, it, it sounds like we're going to work through him doing rentals and leasing it from now on Okay. Uh, for stuff. So it sounds, I'm hoping that stabilizes a little bit. Uh, I'm hoping he keeps the track up and the equipment so we can keep doing what we've always done. Uh, yeah. So it looks like that's still a viable option, but I, I still like the, I still like doing. I still like doing the Expo Center again. I don't know if we can afford it now, <laughs> but it, it's still, it's still a you know a it viable option. It wasn't cheap then, and I'm sure it's only more expensive now. But uh, you yeah. know, at the end of the day, man, it 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 just makes for such a great event. You have like perfect lighting. You don't have to worry about the weather. You're indoors. It's it's, right. it's comfortable. Um, and you really, you really give the vendors a really good chance to to shine, right? To to showcase what they got. The uh, it was a, I, I think with how much you know my business has grown, um, you know I'll be able to grab a lot more vendors that are interested. I mean, at the time I know it was three years ago, but a lot's changed in three years, you know. And I think it that it uh, like it was eight years ago. I know. It feels like it. It feels like yeah. it. You know, but I I know that I, I know that now I'll be able to uh, it you know more. It was what's more up? three years ago. It was, was four it? years ago. Yeah, because I remember I got the date. Remember we argued about putting the date on everything. I was like, no, man, that that makes it nostalgic. And now it is nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> it's nostalgic. I was like, maybe 2018 and all the, everything. I was like, no, we can't do it again. It's it's no, it's 2018. Yeah. And we had banners, we had signs. I mean, we covered. Oh. All the bases. Yeah, dude. It was and it came out so nice, man. Everything was just so nice. We really we really gotta do it again. I, I think I think we no more talking. Let's it's on video now. We're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting you know, it's getting everybody on board to commit to it. And I you know, as much as I love the winter stuff, I don't know that we could pull off 
the winter fest and pull off, you know, that deal. Cause it seems like we always, you always have to, you know, juggle the weather. And it, it it's such a, you know, it, I'd, I'd say if we tried to do something like we did the expo and the track, we'd have to do it somewhere like around November 1st or something like right around beginning yes. of November where we don't have to worry about where we know we'll still have some cool fast weather, but something where we don't have to say, Oh, another blizzard came through. Oh, right. you guys don't, you can't come or, you know, who's going to drive down in the snow. Cause a lot of people, you know, drive their cars still. Oh yeah. Uh, well, that was the problem. I mean, a lot of guys, a lot of guys that were local enough to say, I'm going to come out day of, um, you know, they were, they, they had reached out to me and they're like, dude, I'm not coming. It's supposed to, we're supposed to get a big storm. And I'm like, come on, man. It's yeah, only I mean, a five hour drive. You guys are shoveling as you guys are driving, just going through the snow. You had like a foot of snow to drive through going back. Bro, it was so horrible, man. That ride home, that nine hour ride home turned into 18 hours. You know, it was, uh, it was, it was some of the most miserable driving I've done in a long time. <laughs> Uh, I've driven through a blizzard pulling a trailer before. It was uh, it was in a treat. I went to Michigan, and it happened to be one of those winters where it was like their second most snowfall they've ever had winter type things. And I was driving along Lake Michigan, going to uh, to my parents. I went that was back when I had my Buick. Yeah, and uh, I trailered my uh, Buick up there to drop it off to get it twenty five five chassis put in it. And uh, oh man, <laughs> I uh, I had one incident where you know I was talking to my buddy. We're driving down one of these side roads, and I come up over a hill. And as I'm coming down the hill, there's a stop. The stop sign was buried because there was that much snow. I you know, not the stop sign, but the thing that says stop ahead. And uh, you know, my guy that's with me didn't say nothing. And he's like, "Dude, you knew there was a stop sign and a dead end road, and it was down into a farmer's field." So I had to take my truck, and you know. The snow on the side of the road was probably eight feet high, ten feet high. I had to drive it into the snowbank <laughs> oh <laughs> to stop God. the truck because we weren't stopping. That's crazy. That's crazy. So yeah, I uh, I feel free to drive it in all that snow, and you know, yeah. I, and I I'd like to see the event do good. So as, as greedy as I am about going fast, uh, I I'd still do like a winter fest. In fact, uh, truth be told, we're supposed to have I didn't next. Next weekend, I think it's yeah, it's next weekend. They're doing a, a rental at the track, a pre performance, and okay. uh, I, I said, yeah, I'll be there because I got to prep it. <laughs> it's one of those deals. If I don't prep it, no one's getting down the track. So I'm going to yeah. go out there and prep it. And I believe it's like uh, December third. Yeah, we're doing okay. rental. Down. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I I'm not going to go, but that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, that's how it used to be. Everybody was so hungry for records and going fast that it was like, I, cause you know, when you do this, a lot of times you do these rentals, the hardest thing is because, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to catch weather. So it's not like I know more than a week out. it will be like, dude, this next Saturday going to be epic mine shaft, like killer, killer air. And it, we got to go to the track. And, you know, we had enough guys that were like, junkies that would be like all right we're all coming you know and they come out of the woodwork coming down this track to this rental yeah. and uh i just i don't know what happened you know i i was i was a lot more gung-ho back then and uh we weren't going as fast either you know this was back when we were just all motor we were running you know low tens high nines and now <laughs> that you know shoot i'm almost into the sevens and that weather is just too cold like to be honest like i won't even like even though i'd want to go i was like that's too cold for like now the car is fast enough that it's like, listen, 50s is about as low as I'd go, you know? Yeah. Well, you, need, now you, need, you need those tires to bite the whole track. As well. Right. <laughs> it, it, well, and, you know, and I'm running on uh, alcohol now. So the alcohol doesn't like the cold. Yeah. It needs enough heat to atomize and burn. And when you try to run it that cold, the car actually slows down and it's hard on it. So I just, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't appeal to me like it used to. You know, right. when well, I was different animal now. Yeah, I different like, animal. Oh, I got I'm, I'm good. I, I just need, I need, I just need to stay alive. Cause when you're, I mean, the car's fast and, uh, you no know, shit. when you're going that fast down the track, things happen fast. And, you know, the car is, I want to say last time I chased, uh, a rental, uh, that right there, that piston right there, that piston and rod, that was the last time I chased cold air in my car. Oh really? And the problem is that was the one that bent. The other one broke. And when it broke, you know, you're breaking a rod, kicking it out. Next thing you know, you're doing 130 miles an hour, and there's oil underneath the tires, and you're like, "That's yeah. not." And then, yeah. 
not only did it happen to my motor, it happened to another motor. So it happened to two motors at the same track where it just broke the rods. It just, you start making so much power, you start overpowering parts. Yeah. And, uh, you know, before we're NA just tasting the numbers, like, ah, you're not going to break nothing. It'll be fine. You know, now you're making so much power that, you know, parts start failing. You know, the, yeah, bad yeah. things get worse. Well, now so, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of tracks are requiring diapers now, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Diapers, diapers don't catch coolant so good, but they catch like rods and pistons. Like you kick out a rod and piston, yeah. but like, in, uh, uh, what, like when you push a head gasket though, uh, coolant, like, if you got some type of turn down, it gets it like on my car. Uh, when I lost, I had a diaper on mine when that rod broke. Um, okay. Because I had done uh, the Hail Mary. Uh, it's back here somewhere. Uh, There's one of the Haltex. It was a Hail Mary deal. I went there and they required a diaper. So I had a diaper on the car. So when I lost the rod, it caught all the oil, but it didn't catch the coolant because the coolant went off the tailpipes. So, um, I mean, at least it caught the oil, though. I mean, it's less of a mess. It did catch the oil. It did catch the oil. Um, and now I got the zoomies on it. So now, unless I push out a rear main seal, I don't get anything on the tires. So it, I, I really like the diaper thing. I think it's uh, a good idea. A good idea. I know, uh, I know George Thomas after his last uh, episode at the track, I'm sure he's, uh, he'll be a diaper fan too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah so, I mean, he's, he had the fireball at the back. You know yes. I mean? His his blew up and everything was hot enough that when it hit the exhaust, everything just ignited. That's what happened. You know? to, that's what happened to Joe Columbo's at the track. We were there. Yeah. This shit just caught fire. Yeah. We thought we thought I, from the size of the flame, I thought the entire car was engulfed, and then it just died down real quick. But we were watching it. We were like, "Holy shit!" I'm like, "Yeah, he's dead, dude. There's no way they're <laughs> It was because you know, looking at it from the back, you just see you know his white car trailing down, and then all of a sudden you just see this massive rolling fireball. And uh, you know, we were all you know kind of like stuck on stupid for a couple minutes, like deer in headlights, like, "Oh shit!" You know. Um, and we all start running down and then, you know, by the time we get to like, you know, a hundred feet out, all of a sudden it just dies down and you can see it was just the rear bumper. Bump. Which is good because you guys ran out of breath way before then. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, when, when they got to the hundred, when they got to the hundred foot mark, they looked back at my fat ass like, you guys keep <laughs> going. What are you like? It's going to help me. I'll be all right. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to save two people. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll need you'll need more paramedics than just that one. <laughs> send send one of them down here. The other one up that way. Yeah. Don't, you, got any, uh, this way. <laughs> you got any rivalries going on or what right now? Um, rivalries. I don't. You know, I don't really. I can't say I have too many rivalries. I got the, uh, we got the Cadillac attack race coming up. Um, and that's down in Florida. It's Orlando race. I want to say that has the most prestige rivalry going on. And I wouldn't say it's a rivalry, but there, there is, you know, there is, it is an ego contest, you know, cause it's all blower cars. Um, Brett comes down there with his fifth gen stuff running the supercharge and NA stuff. So, uh, there's a lot of ego floating around there. You know, Cal Hartline's down there with his supercharged Cadillac and there's, yeah. you know, Vengeance comes there and runs in all out classes. Um, I want to say there's going to be some, uh, like a late model class, streetcar yeah. class that'll have some fast cars in it. So, um, it, the, the event stays pretty fast. So there's, because you have so many fast cars there, everybody's, you know, trying to hold their own, you know, and, right. you know, look good. So I want to say as far as uh, rivalries, that has the most. I mean, I race with a lot of them, and I like to win. So, uh, and they like to win too. So it's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, that's the biggest thing I go on. I'm going to uh, Texas 2K this year. Um, I I was, I had raced uh, in heavyweight in the two years prior. Um, the heavyweight class um, took a turn, and I just didn't fit in it anymore. So uh, I wasn't going to build a twin turbo, you know, turbo 400, you know, race car and heavy in a heavy chassis. And uh, it's pretty much what you need for it. I just, or nitrous and a lot of blower. And I just didn't feel like, I just didn't feel like that was my niche. So I'm I'm going there to race in a streetcar class. And uh, it turns out that uh, Lex is going to be there. 
provided she gets all her parts in time. So we're yeah. actually going to be, you know, if I can get my car to do what I want it to do, and we'll see where Lex kind of settles out at with her combo. Uh, yeah. We're going to be, we should be, it wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see us line up against each other at, uh, you know, yeah. Texas 2K. I wouldn't say it's a rival, but, you know, a Coza does stand behind that car and it's a turbo car and I stand behind my car and it's a supercharged car. So it is, it's not necessarily a rival, but it's kind of like an ego. Everybody's doing ego checks, you know? Yeah. Well, friendly competition is yeah, good though. Everybody wants to come out, you know, looking good, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, uh, it's, her, her car, her car is quick, man. Yeah. Oh, she's big. She's making a lot of power, but you know, Everybody, everybody fights their, you know, their handicaps, and her handicap right now is the IRS on it, and uh, you know that. And, and again, she wants to, she wants to do, you know, everybody has their goals. You know, she, I think she talked about in your last video, she wants to go sevens on the IRS, and yeah, it's possible. George, uh, George Benson's done it in the CTSV, and so is Chris Conway and a couple other guys, but those are all Cadillacs. Um, yeah, you know, to do it in a G8, that hasn't been done yet. As far as it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now with an IRS, uh, and it's possible, uh, uh, what was the name? He might have done it with his, his turbo setup, but I can't remember if he was solid axle or not. Um, who? Oh, I can't think of his name. Mm-hmm. He's like, the, he still has the number one spot in the list, uh, for his G8, because I think he went eight O's or something. I'd have to look at the list. Was, that, was, that, was that Daniel Lynette? Yeah, Daniel no. and I. Yeah, he had the big alcohol fender dump turbo race car deal G8, and I don't, yeah. I can't remember if he had a straight axle or IRS. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember either. Yeah, I don't, he was. I don't know that I ever knew like the full spe- specs of his build. Well, he was kind of. He was trying to. You know, he's trying to play the grudge game and race on the underground stuff, and and he did, he just didn't. Uh, he didn't talk a lot about his his build. He was trying to be quiet and sneaky and secretive, you know, with what he was doing, which, you know, it's, that was the game he was in. So yeah. uh, he just didn't hear a lot about it, but you know, he, no one even, you know, it's not like he saw videos of his car. You know, he just said, Hey, I, I ran this with mine. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're saying that now, but you didn't post anything. There's no video. There's no build. You know, you're just saying, that. it's like, uh, well, look, I got a time slip here and said I went sixes, you know? Yeah. Read it. Really you know, but because it's, you know, you just have to take his word for it, I guess, you know. Yeah. Well, I know he was, he was, he was really big in the whole grudge scene. So I, 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 yeah. I believe, yeah. I believe that, it, you know, he was probably just doing that to keep his, uh, you know, his, uh, his ops, if you will, at, at bay, um, you know, in the dark a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't remember if, if he actually made it in the sevens with the IRS or not, or, you yeah. know, I don't know that he, I think he's, I think his time slip that's actually posted is like an eight Oh or something like that. So let's say okay. it is IRS. It's still the one posted is, you know, an eight Oh. So, I mean, Lex to, to want to run it. It's just with, uh, I understand the geometry and the stuff of the G eight and a Cadillac is just way more savvy suspension wise. Yeah. It, it doesn't have as much of a handicap. Like when it, when you try to put power on a Cadillac, it actually tries to hold the tires where they're at. Whereas the rear end and a, like if you watch a Cadillac, it'll do wheelies. How many, I mean, a lot of Cadillacs do wheelies. How many G8s do wheelies? Not many. <laughs> Not many. There's yeah, a couple I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen, I don't think I've ever seen a, a G8 pull up real high, except for yours when you blew the rear out of it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That was the wrong end. <laughs> well, uh, Brian Cannell, he did a nice wheelie. And then uh, I think uh, Chris DeCorde, he, he he's done a couple of good wheelies with his. Yeah, he's pulled them. Uh, yeah. But in general, you just don't see it. It's just because of the instant centers and where the control arms are. It is just anti-hook traction savvy. I mean, I, I laid down that 122, 60 foot with mine. And I tell you, I was like in a G8. I don't think anybody's ever going to beat that. <laughs> I, I I doubt it. I doubt anyone will will. I mean, I'm sure people will come it's, close. It's going to be a tough number, and really to run to run in the sevens. I mean, unless you just throw the kitchen sink at it. I mean, it starts out at the front end of the track, and you really got to roll into the power quick. And with the way the suspension is, um, she's got enough power to do it, but it's it's going to take a good track, and you're really going to have to have power management spot on to get it to do it. And you know, yeah. She's really going to have, you know, Koza's got his work cut out because I think, pretty sure Koza is doing a lot of tune work for him. I, I, th- I think, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think Koza's the tuner. 
like I said, she's got plenty of power. It's just she's had a handicap because it it needs it needs a little more weight bias in the back, and it's hard to get it. And I know she did the spin amounts like me trying to keep getting the weight down on the car and get it so it's a little you're not fighting the weight handicap so much, but the spin amounts don't transfer the weight like the stock suspension does. And you know, with the solid rear axle, I can I can put weight on the tires. Like I can push the back of the car up in the air with the with the solid rear axle. And the G8 is squatting, so it is doing the going the opposite way it needs to go to tr- get traction. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I, I, it, it's it always good to have goals. I mean, I, I hope she does it. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm really. Oh, I, I mean, and I'll be I'll be at uh I'll I'll be at the race with her at Texas 2K. And I, I guarantee you, if she'll if she'll pit next to me, I'll do everything I can to help her. You know, I'll help her try to tune it. I'll help her do suspension adjustments. You know, I'm not even though technically we're racing the same class. You know, yeah. But I always tell people, I was like, you know, I, I've raced against people that are like customers or friends of mine. They're like, come on, man, just let me win. I was like, here's the deal: if if I let you win and then you break the next round, what did that get me? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and, and that's happened. You know, people run next to me and they broke. I'm like, well, see, if I did, if I did not shown up or sandbagged or said, you know, I'm not going to run, I'm gonna let you have it. And you broke. I'm like, well, no, there we go. That's really good. Now neither one of us won. Exactly. Now, now that we're both losers. Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, I always tell them, I was like, listen, if I help you do really good and I do really good, hopefully one of us makes it through the pile. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to think of us as, you know, we're not against each other. I mean, technically, you know, we're kind of friends. If anything else, we're against everybody else. That's yeah. that. That's what used to eat me up. I had I had started a little page and I would try to keep like my group together and keep people current with what I'm doing or going, yeah. you know, what new, what I'm working on or what I'm not working on. And then I had a couple guys that were, uh, you know, in the grudge scene and they'd come in, you know, come on my page and start going, oh, take any one of you guys on. I was like, time out, time out. There's a million other street cars, Mopars, we'll pick something, a Mustang. This is the last place you come on and try to tell somebody you're faster than them. I, these are all my people. I was like, go pick a go pick a fight somewhere else. Yeah, especially like you said, like it's. I want to see Charles Gee was a big offender of that. He he wanted oh. to sit there and come in his own house and start talking trash. He's like, dude, go, dude. There's like a million tracks with other street cars. Go pick on somebody else that isn't one of your people. I was like. Find some new friends or something. I don't know. Make yeah, friends. There's, there's plenty of Mustangs and Mopars that would have, be happy yeah. to take that challenge on. Right. Like, yeah, he he was he was big with. I haven't heard from him in a while, but he was big with that. Uh, you know, he had. I want to say, you know, um, you know, how it is once you have success with it, you just keep pushing it. And uh, I know he had that uh, big nitrous backfire that just destroyed everything. Yeah, you know? I guess he just never recouped from it. Yeah, you know how it is. They get other projects, lose interest. Who knows what happens? Didn't get, doesn't get the support he needs. Um, you know, at one time I was working with them, and then uh, oh, Bubba was helping him with his car. Yeah, and then you know once he changed lanes and or and Bubba stopped helping him and started doing his own thing, and I wasn't working with them anymore. You know, you're kind of like <laughs> you're up there pounding your chest and you don't have a bouncer anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, I was like, you know, well, that that's great. But you know, people, you know, it's, it's, you think you're savvy enough to pull it off until you try to do it yourself. Then you realize it's like, oh, I guess there's more to it than that. Yeah. A hundred percent. hundred percent. I'm surprised. I, I just noticed I haven't seen your cats. Usually they're crawling all over you. <laughs> She's been clawing at the door for the last two hours. I'm, I, I'm telling you, every, I, every time I come in the garage, it's like, just wait. I'll, I'll let you come in in a minute. Because, yeah, she'd be all over. She'd be you, All you'd see is a little tail going back and forth, you know. I'm saying I love your cats. I don't like cats, but I like your cats. Oh, my cats are pretty sociable because usually they're the first person to greet you when you come to my house because yeah. I won't be in the driveway. But they'll be in the driveway. They'll be yeah. in your car saying, hey, I'm checking out, seeing what you brought. You it's, know, not, it's funny because when I went down there, I told I told Jay, I was like, yeah, man, I got, when I got here, Dur was driving your car around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little cross-eyed cat, you know, driving your shit around. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love that cat, though. I, it's funny because I remember I'm, I'm allergic to cats, right? I get all swollen and puffy and everything. And I remember the one time uh, when we were at your house and the axle broke on the G8. And 
you know, it's late and you're like V six axles that were in your car still <laughs> instead of V eight axles. I mean, it's bad enough that you break axles in these cars, but it's like, yo, seriously, you actually left V six axles in this car thinking that oh, that's going to do something. Don't say you left V V six axles in the car. Jay left V six axles in the car, but. <laughs> Yeah, and I remember we're uh, you know we're at your house or whatever, and uh, you and Jay are working on that, and I'm like, it, it's late. I'm like, yo, I gotta pass out, man. Oh, that I, cat would not leave you alone. Oh my god, it's I, mean, I fell. Let me rub this thing in your face, yo. Hey, check on my kale. <laughs> I, yeah, dude, I passed out on the couch. I woke up a couple hours later, and he's just like on my shoulder, wrapped around my face. I was like, oh Jesus Christ, here comes an asthma attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The cats like seem to know who does it. Like, who's allergic to cats? Let's see. It's oh, that guy right there. Let me oh, go that's, that's who I'm messing with. Yeah. yeah, that's the first lap I'm going to right there. Oh, they'd rather have me yeah, than like, Kenny. I'm sure. Like holding their hands up, I was like, dude, the cat doesn't have a gun. You're good. I was like, no, no, I can't. I'm allergic. I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm sure they, they'd rather be crawling on me than Kenny. <laughs> okay, well, you know. Kenny's got like a special affection for those guys. Oh, he sure does. It, it wouldn't, you know, that whole that whole scenario thing. It wouldn't been so bad, except we're in like this half circle. We're all in the shop, and it just so happens that everybody's looking over at Kenny when it happened. You know what I mean? When it happened, I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and he, he had that to- like, you know what I mean? It's like like your pants fell off. He had no control over it. It's like, oh, oh my god. god. I just saw that and you know and it wouldn't have been as bad except the people that did see it like there's certain people you don't want to have you know a story about you hobby. and the wrong people had it yeah the last person you want to have a story about you was javi <laughs> oh yeah javi and uh all the rest of them were here too the, the whole crew was here yeah d and all of them it's funny because bro i i was talking to javi uh not too long ago and uh what so oh, that, oh, that, that that goes that goes unsaid, you know, really? <laughs> really you were talking about that long ago? I'll take so I remember the first I know you can't wait to sell him something else with a warranty. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I remember the first time I like really hung out with Hobby. Like I had hung out with him a couple of times and then we had gone to Ocean City, Maryland, uh for cruising. And this is like the first time I really got to like see his personality, right? So um, uh, we're at the Wawa, right? You know, where, where you, what's up? Or his wardrobe, his yeah. personality, or his wardrobe? Yeah, my man, he's fresh, dude. He's always got something fun. Oh, I, I was like, dude, I was like, man, you got you got to have like I, you, you're the one of the few guys that if I had to guess, you got a walk in closet. Oh, hundred percent. He's he, bro, sure got a walk in closet. I've look. I've seen people match before, but my man, like he, his his wardrobe is so on point, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, he, he's oh, yeah. got. He must. He must literally just go online or go to stores and like he's got. He's got to just like cherry pick these things to match. It's ridiculous, but uh, yeah, right. he, like I mean, I got one pair. I got one or two pair of shoes. They go with every outfit I got. <laughs> you know what? You know who else like that? Uh, yeah, you met Chris, right? The other dude, uh, the, the painter, he's got the CTSV. I'm sure I do. I'm sure I have. He's like that with sneakers too. Him and Javi, I'd like to see who's got a bigger collection because they, man, they got sneakers for every outfit. They match like crazy. I, I see these guys in low key. I'm like, man, he's got. You know, the they like. I'm telling you, it's they got like the the man's version of a woman world. They got like the hat. Oh. The shoes, bro. I envy it. I, I'm like, bro. I don't. I, <laughs> you're, you're looking at it, dude. Like this. Is, if it don't have a G, it don't only looks on it. I don't wear it. You know? <laughs> it. you know where I get all my clothes from? It's when I go to a race event and I buy a bunch of t-shirts. That's my wardrobe, right? Yes. And then shirts. The work gives me shirts. And then <laughs> jeans I order on Amazon. I'm done. You know what? The wife gets me shoes because she feels bad because I'm taping mine up. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, they're very well dressed. Um, but yeah, so I, we were at Wawa, right? And it's it's late, man. It's late. And I'm sitting there and uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, nature hit me, right? And I'm like, man, I got to go, right? Um, and I'm like, yo, I'll be right back. So I, I head to the bathroom. And it, mind you, I've, I've met Javi maybe four times before this, right? And I go, I go out, I'm in the bathroom, right? And I see... <laughs> Over the stall. All right. <laughs> and I look up, I'm like, what the hell? 
And I walk out. I didn't even know it was him. So I walk outside and they're all hanging out, you know, Javi and Jay and the whole New York crew. And I go outside and and they're all they're all laughing and cutting up, right? Dude, they're all laughing. I'm like, what? And they're all like, show me your phones. And it's like a picture of me taking a shit. Um, and I look over him and he's just dying laughing. I'm like, bro, I hate you, bro. And and now, bro, it's like you're not safe. If if you <laughs> don't go to the bathroom around this dude, he will he will snap a picture over his soul every time. There's got to be half a dozen pictures of me floating around somewhere. <laughs> 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 See, you know what I'm talking about. That's it. That was it. Wow. Oh, yeah, you're talking about. Well, that's okay. You know. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's funny. It's funny that that picture made its way to you, right? Like <laughs> it, it did. It yeah. There's there's no you are there's no like safe there's no safe space. <laughs> I'm trying to find it because. Remember, of course, as as stories goes, there was the one where, you know, out of all people, we went to grandson's, you know, our favorite little uh, food joint. The place is good, and though. Is there, and he goes, dude, these sausages are amazing. He's got this oh. thing shaking up back and forth in front of his mouth. And, of course, I got my phone like, Click. thanks, bud. That's going. That's going in the vault. <laughs> And you know, of course, we 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 you know we've thrown that that picture around a dozen oh, times. Yeah. I think I I think I photoshopped that picture. Oh wait, here it is. I I got that one too. There you go. There's your boy Javi with the sausage. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100 percent keeping that. In this video. I tell you, there's all we got. Everybody, there's like criminal evidence we got on everybody. Oh yeah. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. Yeah, there's 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 not much personal space in, in uh when you got all those guys around. Oh no, <laughs> especially when especially when they're all ball busters, man. Every one of them. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they're like a bunch of chickens when they see red, dude. They just eat it. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like they thought that they offer you a band-aid. It's like, no, they all peck at you. You know, it's like, oh, this guy's bleeding. He's just going down. Let's finish him. Let's dude, finish him. You know, that, put the finish move on him. It, it, bro, you, you have to so have hot. you you, you know? really gotta have thick skin, bro. You really do. I know, I know. I, I see that, and you know, the quieter you are, the more you get beat up on us. Man. Yeah, you got to be in it with them, bro. Otherwise, you're you're a target. Yeah, you must all guys go back home and get therapy or something. You know, <laughs> you guys get therapy once a week to deal with each other. I'm telling you, it, it's it's it must be different up here um, because th that's all we do, man. I, I, it's funny because we we'll hang out with each other. And I would, I swear to God, man, 95% of the time is spent like digging on each other. And it's not like a little bit, I'm talking, it's like stuff that would get you in a fight somewhere else, you know, well, you and, know how uh, it's just when you're messing around, you're pushing each other. Next thing you know, you're just full on brawling. Oh, it bro, doesn't it's, stop you, man. The, it went from a little funny joke to like, man, maybe you should pick that pimple. The next thing you know, you're ripping each other's head off. I'm like, what happened? What, where did we go wrong? Because <laughs> you never, you never know where that line is until you cross it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're always pushing it further, you know. Oh my god, it's so true. It's hilarious. Yeah, but yeah, the guys, the things you guys go through. So. Oh my god. So as as we as we move on through this this saga of, of car parts, you know, we all keep going faster. Um, like now. Uh, we're doing this, you know, I just, I just put a, uh, I'm getting ready to go to Florida mm -hmm. this weekend, you know, out of all weekends. Right. Um, don't you stay at home for Thanksgiving? Don't you take time off? Nah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm helping the, you know, I'm helping the wife do all the decorations for Christmas. I'm thrashing on a blower on the bench and then yeah. I'm thrashing on my car trying to go to Florida. Cause, uh, as things progress, you know, we've been using the factory computer trying to do everything with it. And, uh, I just, uh, Adam Cooper, uh, got up with, uh, he works with a couple guys that are really big with Holly and, uh, they got this, uh, Holly that has this, what's called a gateway. So like, I've got a Holly dominator on there on my car to control the engine. And then it goes to like this gateway so I can still keep the factory transmission and the gauge works, you know, my okay. uh, I think cruise could, no, cruise control might not work, but my gauges work. My yeah, gas gauge, my cruise control. <laughs> I'm not going to follow the speed limit that long. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, I just got on the car and, you know, as, as we talked earlier, Adam isn't the, you know, the racer, racer guy. So he loves, you know, Adam's always loves all these making new stuff. He likes making turbo kits and yeah. always coming up with something new to do. But he always, he like, he's like, comes up with something new and cool. And then he like always looks over like, 
hey, uh, you want to try this? this? This is good stuff. You know, he's always trying to find a guinea pig. So, of course, uh, I just have to be a pretty good guinea pig for this project. So I, uh, he's got it in his car and it's working. He's like, well, it works. Um, and I, I get to flog it a little bit more. So I'm going down to Florida. Hopefully, it all works out. I'm always the... I, I'm the worst planner because I'm never really ready for what I'm planning to do. So it's always like the last minute that I was like, okay, I pulled it off. I'm on my way out the door, you know? Yeah. So, but if, if, as long as everything goes as planned, I will hook up the trailer, load the car, get all my stuff, get it running. And I'll be on my way to Florida Thursday night, Friday morning. Okay. And it'll go actually, which believe it or not, I'll be on the dyno for this. Ooh. Uh, well, you know, as much as I do on the street, the car, well, on top of being ridiculously loud, uh, it, it's getting to the point where I can't, it's really hard to do on the street now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're at that power level people. where the streets aren't holding it anyway. Yeah, you're sitting here doing, trying to do pulls at 90, you know, you're already doing 30 over the speed limit and you're trying to do a wide open power pull from there on and try not to like kill yourself, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you know, and that's just like, it, it's not like you're going to do one little short hit and it's like, okay, I'm done. No, you got to go make an adjustment. You got to do it again and then yeah. do it again and then do, do it again. again. You got to like, do it the better part of a dozen times. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and, and eventually, you know, by the time you've talked to God like three times, you're like, okay, I, someone's eventually going to show up. I, I need to like, you know. Yeah. And you, you got to hope it's the police and not the Grim Reaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um. In this case, I'm going down there to do some dyno work. You know, uh, I've got like this car has like because of the computer got at it, it's it's got eight wide bands on it. So I can tune every Easy, single right? cylinder for fuel and timing now. That's pretty sick. Well, you you start making so much power that your 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 forgivability window drops to nothing. Like if I make a pass and one cylinder is unhappy, I lose the motor. You know, yeah. or I move, you know, I lose me or maybe I'll end up in the wall or something, you know. Yeah. You don't, you don't get the error of the margin of error gets so small that you almost get to the, and I don't have hardly any fail safes. You know, this motor doesn't have anything. It's like, oh, I saw you leaning out. So I couldn't, you know, if you don't see the gauge in time or something, it's, it happens so fast. Now with an aftermarket, you know, ECU, uh, you can put in fail safes where it's like, hey, listen, if you see this cylinder do this or go here, I want you to shut it down. Just shut it down. I can make another pass. I don't want to have to fix the car. Yeah. Yeah. No, I so get it. I get it. Uh, it I'm offers not. a bunch of cool, cool stuff. And then, you know, hopefully because you can tune all the cylinders, you know, if, if this cylinder is like my lean cylinder, my hot cylinder, there might be another 60 or 100 horse left in the motor, but I can't get it because this one's holding me back. Yeah. Like, and you I can't a, you've got a pinpoint where it's coming from. And this one's as hot as I can push it. So unless I do some MacGyvering and like, I don't know, put like a spark plug out here so it doesn't light off so soon or, you know, I put a special injector so it runs richer, uh, I can't do anything about it. So now with this aftermarket controller, I can't, you know. Yeah, well, that's, I know I, I, I'm happy to see it come to fruition because I know I've talked to Adam a couple of times and, and I know it's something he's been working on. So I'm happy to see that it's it's finally making yeah, its and, way all the way around. And, and, I want to say it's on the market now. Uh, yeah. Race Products USA or something. I think Rick Anderson Motorsports, whatever it's, I think it's Race Products website or something. But um, they actually sell the gateway, you know, and there's some couple computer nerds that came up with this pass through box because you've got to get the GM, you know, the GM has like a CAN bus. It's like a network. And Holly has the same thing, but they don't speak the same, ang you know, they don't speak the same language. Right. And someone, gateway box to be like an interpreter and it says okay well this is what it was saying okay i got it and then you have to be able to send a certain signal to the transmission so the transmission knows what to do right um hopefully they got that worked out and then the next new thing that's uh coming is we're working on you know most guys go to race cars like a turbo 400 uh you see that pretty common yeah. you've got a trans brake, which we do have now but you can't do it with an irs that's another reason with the solid axle um and the second thing is just absolute control. Like when you got like a race transmission, like you click that gear, it's there. You click the next gear, it's there. It doesn't think about it. It doesn't maybe do what you want to do or what it thinks is better because that's what usually happens with this wing because it has adaptive right. cables. And uh, 
you're always fighting adaptives and lead time. Like I told it to shift at 59 or 56 mile an hour. It didn't shift to like 79, you know, it shifted 20 miles an hour later, you know? Yeah. And stuff like that gets hard to tune a car and you're like, you know, there's so many people that are way outside their box. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you, you get a car that was fast on the street. Fast in the track is way past your level of competence. You know, you just they just don't know stuff. Right. Absolutely. There, Stanley has done getaway cars, has done that like little trans brake mod that he modifies your stuff. And you can have like a little trans brake because turbo cars usually need some type of trans brake to build boost when they launch. And uh, And he's... Just one of those computer wizard guys. He's come up with a way where he's taken the computer off the transmission, like just guillotined it, like took the whole computer off. And then he made like a standalone little computer that you can control with a Holly. And then you can just program it to do what you want. Yeah. And it does it. Like the problem is right now is we haven't worked out a strategy for controlling pressure. So it's just like a race transmission. You get everything, all it's got every time, every shift. Which is good because you get absolute control, but I don't know at what point it'll just start breaking parts. It's like, listen, it, it needs to be calmed or tamed down a little bit, you know? Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm guessing I might be guinea pigged into testing it. I just don't know if I want a guinea pig and test it on my car. Um, I may find uh, another guinea pig to try it on, but... <laughs> Use Jay's uh, car. That's, that's huh? Use Jay's car. <laughs> Yeah, hey, why not? He likes he likes kind of stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it it just it's nice because you know a lot of times people are like, oh, I get tired of burning up my trans. Well, this it may not burn up, but I just don't know if it'll start breaking it. You know, because yeah. at some point, anytime you start something new, you have to learn what does and doesn't work with it. Yeah. So we know the absolutes that'll work. Like it, it absolutely will shift. We can fix a lot of the stuff, but I don't have any way of like, if it shifts too hard and breaks something, I have no way of, I don't have any way of just clicking a few keys and pulling the pressure back. I'm going to have to go and like put it like a, a restrictor jet in the valve body or doing something mechanical to get it to calm down. Right. Uh, unless you come up with some strategy to pulse the pressure solenoids or something, which may come about. But right now, the biggest thing is getting rid of all that because GM has put torque management, everything. Yeah. And with the torque management, you got all these adaptive tables. When you take out the torque management, the adaptive strategy kind of gets pissed off. And that's what you're always dealing with. And you know, when guys burn up a transmission, it's like, well, it shifted good when it left, but adaptive stuff takes over after I gone. And if I turn it off, it, it gets pissed off too. And it, it starts flaring and doing stupid stuff. So I don't, I don't have a win for it because I didn't design the program. I just have to work around what they gave me to use. No, well, I mean, you can only do what's possible, you know. Um, <laughs> you know I've done a lot of un impossible yeah. stuff, it seems. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it's, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm excited to see the 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 concept come come about and where where you're going to take it. Yeah, yeah, you know, I. They, they, you know, at one time, uh, no one would have thought we were going to go eights with a, a factory blower. And, you know, here we are. And, well, uh, I'm on I'm on the threshold of almost sevens now. So uh, it, look, it wasn't it wasn't that long ago that if your car went like low elevens, that was fast, right? I mean, it wasn't you know to see one of these cars, you know, these four thousand pound you know cars get drug across the finish line at, at, you know, anything faster. Let's be honest. I mean, anything even in a single digit is, in, is very impressive in itself. And then to see where, you know, guys like you were taking it is just, it's, uh, it's inspiring to the rest of us slow guys, but it's also like, you know, it's just amazing to see you're like, Holy shit, man, this is, this is actually possible. This is something that, you know, this is a, a, a real, you know, legit race car if you want it to be. And it's, uh, it's it's pretty cool to see you know a car that didn't get a whole lot of attention from it's you know from GM or or really from you know uh, you know people in general. I mean, just the community. Um, you know, I know it has a cool yeah. following now, but it, it, you know, for a long time, these cars were just another car on the road, and to see, well, yeah, it's not it's not like a Corvette, yeah, it's not a two door either, so. It didn't get it didn't get nearly like look at all the Camaro stuff that's out. Look at yeah. all the stuff for Corvette. Let's just talk about the same year, you know, Corvette and same year Camaro. Like they got like 
everything. You know, and a oh. G8's like, you just got to hope that something from a Camaro fits it. Yeah, and, and it's, it's not only did they get everything, but they got everything from multiple sources, right? I mean, yeah, how many how yeah. many different manufacturers are making the same parts for Corvettes uh, and Camaros? I mean, you really have your pick of the litter, but the, the G8 right. kind of like... If they didn't make it big enough, if... You know, if this company they make a big big enough turbo kit, this guy will. You know, I mean, there's yeah. you know, you have your pick, and you know, with the G8, you know, that's where, and that and that's kind of why I stayed with you know, you know, everybody's like, you know, guys are doing. It's like, hey man, when are you gonna put a turbo on it, dude? Truth be told, I want to say, um, the turning point, the turning point for me going from an NA car to a supercharger, because at one point I didn't have any plans. I had the Cadillac. The Cadillac right. was gonna stay supercharged, and that was gonna be my power header car. And the G8 was going to be my NA car, and I was just going to stay NA with it. I was kind of content with it. I was going to keep fiddling around with it and, you know, keep, you know, whittling away at it. You know, heck, maybe I'd been at 960s by now with the NA car uh, had I done the same thing, you know, with where I'm at. And uh, I had built a car. I had worked on the LSA platform with, like, yours and Jay's and a bunch of other guys that had got the, let's put, you know, because it was an easy bolt on. It was pretty much a no brainer. All all the accessories were in the right spot. You put an LSA on it. You put the right water pump. It's like a bolt on. You know, it didn't it didn't take a brain surgeon or anything fancy. It was all GM parts. It was a no brainer to put you know a supercharger on the car. The problem is, is like you know with the car, like just like Lexus having is getting it to hook. You know, and finding a way to make it go fast down the track where you're not always tearing apart the car, or you know, eh. You can put LSA on it and go 10 O's or 990s. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm almost there NA. Why would I want to put a supercharger on it? They're almost run as fast or something, you know? And, uh, I built a car once and I just kind of stepped back and I had changed the way I decided to do the build. I was like, I came up, I, I, I did some work on a blower, found some more power. And then I changed my strategy. You know, I was like, listen, I know this doesn't work doing this. So. I'm going to try something else. I thought outside the box and I, you know, I picked up a different strategy for the trans. I t- picked up a different, you know, gear concept for the back. And then poof, now I've got low nine second G8 cars running around with these blowers on them. I was like, Holy cow. I was like, I was like, man, I was like, I just went this fast, these, this car. I was like, man, I bet you I could do the same thing on my car. And I know I could probably go eights. And at the time I was just looking at like an 890 or something like that. Uh, just to touch an eight, I want to say I did it. So I, I changed over my car to an LSA. I did everything, you know, I did, a, I built the car and that's kind of like the same thing I did with NA. I did it. I had to came up with a plan. I built a couple NA car, you know, a couple NA cars and it said, okay. And then I went and did the same thing and I did everything. Yeah, I did everything. You know, a lot of times, one customer will do this, but he won't do this. And one guy will do this and not do this. And I was like, you know, if I do it, I'm doing every single one of those. And uh, that's when I went that 1059 in mind with the 60. And that's when I set the record. So I did the same thing with the blower. I said, you know what? I'm going to do every single thing that no one else would do on top of what I know that works. And I'm going to try to go eights. And man, the first time I went to the track, the very first pass was, it was an 892. The very first pass. And then the second pass was at 887. I was like, I'm done putting the trailer. That thing's going on blocks. I, I have conquest the mighty, I've, 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 the golden, I've got the golden goose, the golden egg, or what do you want to call it? The grail is mine. It's, it's over. I'm done. I said, I'm retired. I did it. And then, uh, I was like, I can go a little faster. Then I went 870s. Then I went 860s. And then I was like, hmm. And then I did some more. Next thing you know, I'm going, uh, 840. And I'm like, holy cow. Cause I never, when, uh, Justin Covington went at 848 in his, I had only gone, I think an 860 and like really good air. And I was like, man, I am never, I'm, I like being Rick Crawford. So I don't like being as like, you know, when you're at the back of the pack, I'm like, Hey man, are you ever going to try to do turbos and go fast? Like, you know, these other guys, I'm like, eh, just doesn't appeal to me. Uh, when I, when I, found out something new to do and I cracked off an 840 uh, and I took that spot, you know, on the list, I was just blown away and ecstatic. And then from there, um, I did the SRA thing. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm 18 and I'm knocking on the doors of seven. And uh, I think, I don't know, we'll see where it goes from here. 
I know, I know Lex is racing for sevens and so am I. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm still, there's, there's all kinds of stuff we're still working on. We got all those new cams that I haven't tested yet. You know, we got a new vendor, you know, we're still, uh, Brian Tooley still spooling up his machining program. So, uh, and if, you know, I've, you've seen, I've worked with him and I've been over at comp with those guys messing with those guys that, uh, the comp camps thing that has, uh, that's kind of weird watching that whole saga because they've been, you know, comps been bought up by Elbrock and a lot of the old school, you know, Elbrock, you know, comp guys have kind of started fading off a little bit. So, you know, it'd be kind of like if, uh, you and me kind of faded out of the G8 world to be like, huh, it's kind of like they're a void here. So it's not the same people anymore. You know, Circle D's got big. Brian Tooley's gotten really big. I mean, he's really expanded a lot. Um, his new facility is, uh, have you seen his new facility up there? Well, it, I want to say it's, it's a bunch of everything. He has a really, uh, really awesome business plan. And, uh, you know, Kentucky's always been good to him, I guess. Um, uh, everything he does. And, uh, he's a, he's a real go getter. You know, I, a lot of stuff that Brian does, you know, people see it as Brian Tooley, but um, he he really goes after, like when he goes after a part, he doesn't just, you know, shop around. He's like, hey, these guys sold me a can for a dollar cheaper. I mean, he he goes back and like when he was going after like doing his camshafts and stuff, or people don't understand, like he went to all the manufacturers, like, like the manufacturer that makes the cams and the cores. And he QC'd and QA, ch- you know, QA checked all his parts. And he's like, hey, listen, these guys have the best product that I can get. And that's what he picked. You know, so he does he does a lot of really good work for his R&D. Um, a bunch of guys working on testing stuff. And um, he is really hungry for always something better, faster, you know. So and he's got his own product line. So a lot of stuff in his product line just isn't something from China. You know, he's. He's, most of his stuff is he's U.S. based, and uh, yeah, I got a lot of respect for him. He's a great guy to deal with. You know, I went there and worked them directly, doing some dyno work and camshaft stuff. So, um, very, very savvy guy, and you know, he has a lot of good interest with everything he does. When I went up there and did all the dyno work, you know, we had talked about a bunch of stuff, and uh, one of them was uh, he's eventually someday if it's if he gets it done, he wants to be grinding his own cams. You know, I, you know, it is, he's like, he asked me, he's like, Hey man, what would it take to grind, you know, do this for you? I was like, Hey, you just, you just say when and where, and we'll make it happen. And he's, he's got a million things on his plate. So it's been a slow process, but, uh, let's see if I got it here. He's already got, um, he's already getting it close. Let's see if I can get in my camera. There it is. You sure it's just a drink? <laughs> So yeah, uh, I wish I could flip over the picture because it always looks backwards in there. But he put he went. I gave him my logos, and he's got it on the camshaft box. So yeah, yeah, he's uh, so um, it, it's very possible that sometime in the future um, he'll have like a whole you know he'll be I'll be getting my cams directly from Brian, and he'll probably probably carry them. You know, that, that's been, that's been one of the big things I've been fighting. You know, I once, you know, I started out, you know, cause when I worked at the shop, um, you know, that 12 years I was working at the shop, we had, uh, a Lenati, you know, we were distributors for Lenati. So that's, it was, def- it just happened to be chance that I ended up using Lenati cams. Um, it didn't have nearly the selection comp. And this is before that comp even bought them. I'm pretty sure. So as I continued to use the stuff, it, it's worked really well. They had a really uh, smart guy there that was good at designing cam lobes, and it it I just happened to be the right guy at the right time, and you know doing all the Lenati stuff. You know all my stuff went fast. I didn't have uh, I wasn't have valve train issues. You know um, fast cars. Um, there's other people that have you know I won't say names, but one of the reasons you know people that have copied me, it's like well this cam, this drag master, this two twenty three two thirty one. I'm just going to get this so-and-so to grind that same cam and I'll just sell it, you know, because they'll give me a better price and uh, I'll, I'll do just like he did. And, you know, little do they know that, you know, copying someone, it's just like tunes. People are like, Oh, aren't you worried about them copying your tune? I was like, man, if you know how much more there is to it than just copying and pasting, um, they can get away with it maybe once or twice, but it's, it's never going to fall in place. Right. 
So they'll copy it, but there's so much about low profile and dynamics. Like just because it's the same number on paper, what you see, like you look at the drag masters, the 223, 231, 6, uh, 625, 622 lift. Well, this guy's got a cam. It's a 629, 629 lift. It looks almost like it's a little bigger. So maybe it'll run the same or a little faster, but there's so much more going on. They're like, they don't understand that the low profile they used was like half the size. You know what I mean? They got a lobe that it's, that's like this. And I have a lobe that looks like this. You know what I mean? You know, he's, he's playing with, you know, a teacup and I got, I got a tuna can, you know what I mean? So, and, and you know, when they got cars, I was like, Hey man, I got this, uh, I got this, we'll call it a drag master, whatever you want to call it, copy. And uh, I, I'm having a hard time running fast. I'm only doing this. I was like, yeah, I know why. <laughs> you might not know why, but I know why. And I was like, you're going to have to change the cam. And the same thing with converters. You know, I've seen guys have problems with converters. And I was like, yeah, well, you, you got to get what is going to work. You can't just fake it. 